What's going on Tuesday, gamers? We have a special stream for you today because Black Magic Craft and his buddy JP were walking through, not walking through, driving through the Twin Cities on their way to Adepticon. So they decided to stop, record a podcast, and show us Idols of Torment. Uh, before we get into that, one quick thank you for Lord Area Can and RG Hanomic for the subs. But today, we're going to play a learning game of Idols of Torment. You're going to learn along with me. And let's get kicked off with the uh, with the setting, JP. What's going on here? Yes, this is Idols of Torment. It takes place in a world called the Echo, which is the remnants of heaven and hell, obviously inspired by Jeremy's work with uh, <laughs> terrain. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the classic piece of terrain yeah. that kind of sparked everything. Um, what you're playing is you are actually characters in the game playing on playing taking the role of a thing called an eternal. Okay. So uh, we are cosmic beings yeah. uh, as players looking down on this and realm. It okay. makes sense when you start to do some of the powers in the game because uh, when you're doing your powers, you're actually kind of delivering them through the models. It's not the models themselves like doing some of these things. So um, it's a two-player game, um, really sort of influenced by like a classic strategy game, like think of chess, you know, where both players have the same roster, there's no list building or anything like that. Um, so I guess just take a look at the pieces on the board. Um, everybody's got eight miniatures and then one special miniature called the totem. Which is like big, big boy. Okay, yes. Each miniature uh, has a number of candles on them that we've used to identify what idol class they are. Oh. Uh, obviously the different idol classes have different... Uh, so if you look at your stack card, like the other side of that one, it shows the little, uh, so you know, the one with like five candles is the stalker. Oh, wonderful. Okay, that's very helpful for figuring out stats and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, because it is like a miniature agnostic game. These are the official models, but if you want to like make your own, this is a way to like, you see what you get. Like you know that that is that because you put that indicator on. That's super nice actually. So these cool little candles are included in the game pieces set, which is yeah. sort of like the core set um, that you would need in addition to the rule book to play the game. It also has the lost miniatures on it. So those are the other miniatures nice. in the game, these fellows here. Those are the lost souls that are living in this echo of the combined heaven and hell. And so you, as these Eternals, are sending your idols into the echo to try to release those souls and take the energy back into the deep cosmos. Okay. Sort of thing. So, okay. so that's the objectives. You're trying to reap these souls. And, uh, and what we'll play today is just the standard game. There's uh, multiple scenarios with different things that sort of invoke uh, some heaven and hell. We have uh, these Guardians rules where there's like third-party creatures that you need to you know, fight and things like that. So, cool. so just in this one, the goal is to just try to reap more loss than, than your opponent. Okay. Um, so just quickly go through the models. So the one with one candle, that is your Reaper. Okay. And the one with two candles is the one with your Corruptor. So I don't know if you can that's, point them out there. That's your, your Reaper and that's your Corruptor there. Okay. Yeah. So they're, uh, they're sort of like a tandem that uh, have a bunch of special rules that kind of uh, sort of run the whole objective of the game. So the Corruptor has access to a bind action. So you can bind the Lost and when the Lost is bound, then your opponent can't reap it. But it also makes it easier for you to reap. Okay. And Here's the lost the, will start yeah. to walk towards you and then sort of the lost movement step. The lost are these, these guys, yeah. characters. Yes. Okay. And these are non playable characters yep. and they move with a random function. The, yeah. They, they'll be moved based on like a, a set of rules and this will kind of dictate okay. what they do each turn. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. okay. They're generally trying to run away from you because they recognize the <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in, in a basic sense, they're like, oh my God, what the hell is that thing? I'm getting out of here. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's fair. So the other thing that, the, oh, sorry. And then the Reaper has uh, a special ability that allows him to, or him or her, it, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> stay on the board uh, after it reaps a model, as opposed to any other model. If you reap a lost model, it actually disappears from the board as it sort of grabs that soul and kind of disappears off into the, the recesses of space there. As it would, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing you'll notice in the cards, is those two models have this beacon ability. So as I was mentioning, eternal powers. So you're, you know, kind of the eternal, this cosmic being. When you perform an eternal power, sure those are the two models that you would actually measure the reach from. So if you Look, pick, take a yeah, like power. so. These all have this beacon ability. So if I, if if the card just says like three inch reach, it means from the beacon you choose to deliver. Oh. Uh, look on those ones there. Like so the corruptors and reapers yeah. have beacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Okay. And 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 your totem, which doesn't have a stat block, it's okay. just a thing, also has the beacon ability. Oh, okay. So, so those three models are what you can deliver these powers through. Okay. And you and I have the same set of these powers that we can use. Beautiful cards. Um, the only stipulation is that per turn, if I cast, if I, if I per successfully perform one of these, it's done for the turn. Like it can't be done again. By either of you. We have the same ones, but each one can only be done once. So I can eliminate your 
access to them for a turn, essentially. They're oh, between us. Between oh, us. Oh, okay. Like in the universe. Well, that's fun. Okay, so you yeah. could you could pick an ability just to block it. There are rare because, circumstances exactly. where it, it may be that I don't want to do something, but I know that you might. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, very yeah. cool, very cool. Um, one quick mention. Thank you to uh, Benno Germosen for the uh, Prime sub. People are pretty hyped about checking out the game in the chat. Thank you, Nurgle Matthew. All right, so uh, we have the setting. We have the general ideas of some things you can do. Is this an alternating activation game? No, the activations are going to be done using uh, activation or initiative tokens. So okay. in that bag just to your right uh, with the cool logo on it, there's 20 tokens in there. Uh, well, numbered 1 to 20. Okay. And uh, so we'll draw these tokens at the start of each round, and those will sort of uh, give you your order, your act your activation order between the two players. Starting at 20, like yeah. if I have the 20, I get to do something first. I have the 19. Like I might get a run, yeah. and you might get a run. I might get all at the beginning, you might get all at the end. So it's constantly changing uh, dynamic. Um, and we would also like, we've skipped the first part of this, which is like the setup and the deployment, which would also use that where um, we would each draw one for each of our models. And whoever has the highest number would place a model of their choosing on the board. And if I have the second one, then go through and we use those to pay for it in that sequence. Uh, but because deployment is a very tactical part of this game and different than the average war game, um, you don't have a lot of context to base like your strategy. So JP set up like mostly deployed for both of us. And we still just have our last couple models that we can throw out and kind of get a feel. But uh, yeah, because it's not one side versus the next coming at each other, it's a free for all. And basically what you're trying to do is dictate what's going to happen on the first turn with these lost moving. That's how we're we would normally be positioning ourselves in a in a way to make these lost move where we want them and we can get them. Okay. Thanks to Reaper Miniatures for the raid. Oh, oh appreciate it, Reaper. A... Speaking of Reapers, <laughs> hey. Reaper MSP. Uh, thanks, Scott, for the correct pronunciation of my name. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. I try. Um, so there is a thing we're both trying trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. What are are there other antagonistic things that we can do to one another? Yes. Would it ever make sense for me to attack him? All the time. All the yeah. time. Okay, yeah. so that, that's a so okay. the the main standard win condition is when the game ends, I have reaped more loss than you have. Okay. I can also table you. When does the game end? Uh, so the game ends w either when all of the lost are off the board, or when one of us has no um, idols left. Uh, but also at a at round, four, uh, there's a I phase out. So basically, as we got after a couple turns, we'll roll a die to see if it continues into a next turn, and it will get easier and easier for the game to end. So there is a set time limit on when this game ends. Like you can only play X number of six, six turns. Okay. You can't go longer than that. The game will often finish before that, just through other win conditions. So there, yeah, there's the win condition of having the most uh, lost. Um, but also there is what's called a brutal victory where even if, if the game ends and you have more loss than I do, but if the game ended by me killing your last model, I would technically win that. Okay, so that, that trumps the uh, souls. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the other component that's important is at the end of the table is the echo deck. Okay. Um, when you flip an epo epo echo card, sorry, which we'll do at the start of the first uh, round, the echo deck. Um, you'll see that there's three pieces of information on it that sort of control what happens that game, or that round rather, so it really just makes each round uh, unique. The Lost might make different decisions. Um, you guys might have access to more or less tokens, but I'll explain that as we get into the first round. So, so yeah, the Lost were deployed, so normally if you're setting up a game, you would deploy your Lost. And, and we would take turns deploy deploying totems. the Lost. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we would, one of us, like high roller on a roll off, would place a totem, then you would place the next one, and then we would each have our initiative tokens and go through placing these, spending our initiative tokens to place them how we want. Which, you know, we've skipped that. We each have three left, one of each of the key uh, unit types. Uh, so we, we each have like a lurker, a slayer, and a stalker. And I guess we can just like, without the initiative tokens, let's just take turns exactly, deploying each of them. Thinking, yeah. uh, so the idea here is that on the next turn, the loss before anything happens are going to move. And you essentially want them as close to your... Oh, there it is. There it is. Uh, you want them to end up within a, a like as close as possible to your reaper and or your corruptor so that you can get them yes uh so you're a bit like trying to kite them towards you right okay. uh and there are fairly straightforward rules of how they act the cards will say how far they move if they move and how far 
but then determining which direction is based off of fundamentally whatever idle scary thing they're closest to they run in a straight line away from okay and then it gets more convoluted whether it's two or three and opposing but essentially you want to look at this where um so i'll i'll, I'll place this stalker i'll i'll like de i'll deploy it so i see there's this lost here um or say maybe this one i kind of want it i want it to run this way so what i'd like to do is get a model in place in a line that makes this one hopefully run towards me. However, I can't put it within three inches of one of these or of one of your models. Okay. So that's like the boundary. This is the... Keep going. Yeah, this is the safe zone. So that uh, lurker was placed there to sort of sort of do that, that actually he tried to get that loss to sort of move towards where you're but i might is, so. um actually do the same with this one and try to funnel this one this way but i've got to make sure i'm at least three inches away from that okay i might go somewhere here be three way from this person but also yep. shore up that guy to make sure he doesn't run this exactly. way but maybe yep. that way or that way uh, and uh, it may come up, the Lost can run off the, the playable board, and right. they are gone. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. something to keep in mind, too. And then here, like, I might think uh, less about the Lost and more about aggression. And uh, this is my Slayer, which is my most aggressive model for fighting. I might want to put your Ooh. Corruptor at a bit of... Can you destroy my totem? No. No. Okay. So totems can't like uh, can't take any damage. They have no hit points or anything like that. Okay. And so the one on in, on your right there, that's a lurker with the four candles. So that's the only model that can actually take the range attack. Yeah. So that's a yeah, ranged attack model. Okay. Well, I'm seeing you respond. Or do you have two slayers over here? You do. Uh, I I do. Yeah. Okay. Two five candles, boys. So you're coming in hot. Maybe I want to react to that and also kind of fight you a little bit. And I think I will. Why not? I don't want to think too hard about this. Yeah, because it's sort of a game. balance of do you sort of protect your Reaper and Corruptor or go after, you know, your opponents. And it really kind of creates an interesting balance in when you're doing your deployment. Yeah, my, my first inclination would be to create a strong area and then just sweep through the whole thing. There you go. Uh, but if they... If they walk away from me, I can't. Uh, that might not work out. Yeah. Um, so I'll try a mixture of stuff. But the great thing is you don't know what the lost are going to do. And we do. don't know yeah, exactly. Yeah. We know what they might do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know the possibilities. Yeah. I'll give you a quick note just about terrain as well. Uh, so everything is true line of sight. If you can see something, you can shoot it or you know take a bind action, that kind of thing. When you're moving through terrain, you would move at half speed. So everything's inches. So you, uh, you count every inch as two inches when you're moving through it. Unless if you have the Agile ability, and you'll see on the card there, the Stalkers have the Agile ability, ability so they can run through terrain unimpeded. Which okay. is, uh, for me, it's these little guys, and for you, it's these guys. Yeah. All right, all right. The, the little the squirmy dudes yeah. can, like, go quick through stuff. Okay. And then the most important thing about terrain is what we call these uh, impassable thresholds. So for the Lost, the impassable threshold is one inch. That means that they have to stop at anything that's, like, more than one inch vertically. And it kind of creates areas where they get, you know, stuck, like, pinned up against the wall and... That kind of thing, but for idols, it's three inches. So you can kind of climb up things and diagonally or vertically as long as it's under three inches. Okay. But the loss that's lower, it's only one inch. Okay. So. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So you guys are deployed. So we are deployed. Um, so now we would start the game. Okay. Um, so you're kind of gone through all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that happens is the echo. Would card you like to flip flipped. the first echo oh, card? I yeah. Would yes. All right. So this is determine the behavior of the lost. Yeah. What am I seeing here? Okay. So the six inches means that the lost are going to move away from nearby idols, and they're going to move six, six inches. inches. Okay. So some of the options in the deck are like a zero inches or a nine inches. Okay. So you got sort of like the average yeah. card. So they might not move. They might move a lot. And there's also one that is a um, T, uh, which indicates that they move towards the nearest totem. Okay. All right, so six inches, and what's the two in the middle? The two is the amount of extra tokens that you get to draw. So when you're drawing tokens from your bag, you're going to draw one token for each model that you have, okay. plus whatever that number is. Okay. So as you can see, that number might just give you more resources in a round, because with a token, you can either activate a model or perform an eternal power. Okay. 
So it becomes uh, sort of a decision, you know. So as we lose these are the our internal powers. Yeah, exactly. And as yeah. we lose our models, like the the base amount of those tokens we draw is one per model we have on the board. So as they deplete, I might have less than you, but that is like an amount that can change it for better or worse, where you might only have two models, but if you draw two, at least you get four tokens to do yeah, things with. a little with. bit of a comeback mechanic L too. L yeah. For behind, yeah. The final number is uh, the modifier for doing a power manifest roll. So power manifest is you would make a roll with a d12 to see if you can get off one of the eternal powers. And that's the that's your target, is the one in the triangle. So if I'm, if I'm trying to do this, I, I need an eight on a d12, but this modifier acts. So this one's a zero. Oh. But sometimes the you know the cosmic space might be full of energy, and that might be a plus two. You know, there's a lot going on in me as an. I just have a better. So there's some turns that are better to do these on, some turns that are harder to do them on. Okay. Now you see why I said the echo deck is kind of the engine that runs the game. So these three factors really kind of control so many things and what you what you can do. So that was the first step. The second step is you guys will draw your tokens. So I guess yeah. Scott, so, if you want to reach into the bag and uh, yeah, you so have your full. You stuff. have eight models. Um, you don't count your. Uh, Totem for in that capacity should just draw eight. Six. I need ten, right? Because of ten and plus yeah. two. Yep. Okay. One, two, three, four. All right. Um, and since this is an easy one, since you drew ten, I got the rest. In there? There's twenty in okay, here, so nice. sometimes it works out real nice. Then you just line them up, kind of, in yeah, and then you order. see what you got. Nice. Um, uh, thank you to Atsu. Um, hell yeah, excited to try this out at Adepticon. Okay, so wants to try it out. You have to Come find us. us. Yeah. We're not there in official capacity, but we'll yeah. be happy to play with you. Yeah. Uh, join our Discord. Uh, yeah. Because we'll, yeah, uh, we'll put out uh, on our Discord a, uh, you know, hopefully a location where we've managed to set up a Renegade game. Nice. It's like a secret menu item at Adepticon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Um, thank you for the sub, Atsu, and also thank you to Teague Like League. What up? And also, Enoch Crew, it says, 32 months of amazing content. Also, Black Magic Craft is awesome. He's all right. Sup, nerds from Zambies. What up, Zambies? Also, Hi. thank you for uh, more subs from Mycelium Veins and Lovable Oaf. Hey, Zambies, I made you a giant butt sticker. Butt stickers. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, wait, are you saying that you turned Zampies into a sticker? No, she already has her own butt sticker of butts, but I printed a big sticker so that she could put it on her butt. She asked me to. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right, I think I maybe you were saying you transformed into. I think you're going to come out of the gates a little bit stronger than me. I got then, I'm a, then I'm going to clean up though. Yeah, I got yeah. an 18, uh, 17, 16. So I'm assuming you don't have. Well, you should have a 19 or. I have 20 and 19, 15 and 14. Okay, so but you, I also have four. That's the lowest number. Yeah, so we're starting at 20. So you get the first. Oh, we go yeah. that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. so you get okay. the first two activations. Okay, so then it isn't. Yeah, not, not too bad. The first. We but do first, the we last know. thing of the opening. Okay. And this is where the lost make their move. Okay. Yeah. So six inches. So the way we deal with uh, resolving these is we always work from the side of the board with the echo deck and sweep this way just okay. to keep it simple. So they are each going to move six inch. I'm going to have to get up for this one. Uh, so we would start with this one. And first we determine what is the closest idle. So this one is, you know, just a hair over three inches. And this one is just both of these are like as close as they can be without touching. So these are evenly placed. Yeah. Right. So um, it's not clear which one it's going to move away from. Actually, is that third one also? Yeah, actually, he should be at three. But now that I'm thinking about, no, he's more. He's more. He's more. He's, he's like three so and a half. That'd be good for me because he might come toward this. Well, now you guys make your first roll. So, so now oh. what happens is, if it was just one of us, we would just take a straight line from that idol and move the lost in that direction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But because there's two of them, and one is mine and one is yours, it becomes a very simple roll off of which one it is. Okay. So a d20. And it will uh, move away from. Yeah. So if you win the win, win, win the roll, it moves away from the other person. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Scott won the roll, so it's going to move away from me. Okay. Cool. Um, so now, whoop, that's Ooh. not a tape measure. We have a live stream roll here. That's very important. If oh. the dice roll never goes in the box, it does not count. Oh yeah, okay? that's that's just that's like end. that's just the rules of life. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, okay, cocked count. is not a rule. Oh, for sure. Okay, so it, does, it moves away from his player because he won the roll. Or sorry, yeah, yeah. It moves away from you because you won the roll. So now, he's going to move in a straight line six inches this way. All right, very cool. So which is this is like the little bit of a trickier part to do. Um, we're playing war games. There's, yeah. there's so much 
tricky. This is like a lightly so. populated Idols of Torment table too. Yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna move uh, six inches that way, like into my. Someone is speaking French in the chat. Do either of you oh, speak French? A little bit. Okay. He does. He also speaks sign language, so if anyone would like to speak sign language in the chat. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was the first one. Now, this one. I think JP set this up. I think. I so that it's like a three way tie between three of your. No. It's closest to this guy. Okay, so. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, so it's going to move six inches in a straight line, which puts it into this, which is uh, the pillar. It, it's impassable. It's higher than an inch, so it can't crawl. It can't roll. It. Okay. Now, there's two ways to play this. One is a very strict, limited rule that when it hits something, it stops. Uh, there's an alternate rule with once you get more comfortable with the game, that you can have dynamic loss where you can use a bit of judgment and they will skirt an object, you know, up to a certain angle amount. Like, yeah. But for clear rules, it stops. Okay. And then this one, he's going to move. I think oh, it's got to be closest to this guy right oh, here. I think you're probably right. Yeah. So we'll go. It's going to be six inches. It'll we'll, like stop like right. If he runs into another. I actually think he's, it, it would, a true straight line would hit that lost and okay. stop. And then we'd resolve this one, which is closest to here. The, here, here, yeah, yeah, definitely. You can measure if you want, so but it'll, I think, it'll just run into I think the it's train. yeah, it's just gonna go boom. Okay. Now, if you're playing with dynamic loss, you would just say it's gonna, you know, skirt yes. that. Yeah. But okay, uh, so I'm keeping it simple. Keep it simple. This is the last one here, right? No, there's another one. Oh, there. there's one there. Um, okay, so this, I don't know if we're. I think I set the one up exactly between the two again to have another one of those roll off. Yeah, so we got a three and a three, so we'll we'll roll off again to see. Oh, my bad. Gotta use, Gotta the, use the right dice. What's going on here? Uh, <laughs> so one drive from mine. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, so for this one, right? Was it? Yeah, it was this yep. one. So, it's gonna, so it's gonna move away from this. Which is good. You want it to run towards your reaper. I know, actually, this yeah. is kinda awesome. No. <laughs> All right, and then um, the last, for all intents and purposes, let's say these are three equal models, but I have so how do we resolve that, JP? Oh, uh, then you get to pick which of the yeah. models it moves away from. Because so, he has so, a great so I have number. I have two of them, so it's more scared. But I get to pick which of the three models which it three. moves. Three. Which of the opponent's models? Which of the? Yeah. Oh, sorry, which of the? No, he gets. What's that? I get to pick which one of his models. Yes, because he has more. Yeah. I have more. Yeah. Oh, you have so more. So Scott gets I can't to pick. See the yeah, angle. yeah, yeah. Okay, the angle. That's sorry, what I was getting sorry about that. So I was looking at these two here. So Scott, yeah. I have the most models. Mm -hmm. It's going to move away from one of my models, okay. but the opponent gets to choose which. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. A little bit of a give and take. Yeah. Then. Okay. I like that. So I got to pick one of your models for it to move so away from, and I'll pick probably that one just so it runs right into my models. Yeah, it's going to run right into that. Yeah, I think actually it will. I didn't see that stalker hiding anything. Because <laughs> I, I deployed like, it. That wasn't in your <laughs> original deployment there. Uh, what the person was saying in French was a little hello from a French guy who has been following BMC for quite nice. a few years. Good game, everyone. Cool. Merci. <laughs> and I'm All done. right. So we've done our lost phase. So we've done our lost, yeah. Which has, does it have a name, official name? Well, we call that the opening. So okay. the opening okay. has three steps. You reveal an echo card, you draw your tokens, the lost move, and then you get into the player turns. Okay. Player turns, which, yep. so now you have your 20, which you can spend however you'd like. You can use it to activate a model or attempt an eternal power. Okay. Um, this is on a D12, right? So with, with no modifier at all, I'm not going for anything in the yeah. eights or even, even the sevens, honestly. Now, something to consider is you can, if you have two consecutive tokens, like a, a, a 20 and a 19, you can use those together, spend them both, uh, and you will get a plus four. Plus four. Plus yeah. four oh, on your roll. Oh, okay. So, you, you know, that's your kind of, I really want to do that if you have, but ha they have to be consecutive tokens. You can't like save one and. Okay, so I have the 20 and 19. I'm going to go first and second. I can yeah. play a, is it called the divine power? Eternal or power. Eternal yeah. power. I can activate, activate a, a model. person. And what is activating a person? So look like moving and attacking, yeah. moving yeah. in. Yeah, so you, uh, you can move and then there are uh, a few different actions you can take, which are here. Like there's an attack, a rush, which 
uh, you know, just a farther movement. Uh, a reaping action, which is trying to reap one of the lost, uh, which you have to be engaged with it to do it, so you wouldn't have that uh, immediately. Disengage is if we're engaged and in combat, and you move out of that, I get to hit you for free, okay. unless you use an action to disengage. Okay. Uh, Fury is, so every model can only attack once per turn. Or with, activate once or, or activate once per turn. Um, with the exception of the Slayer has an ability on, called Fury, which means if it's already been activated, you can spend another token later within that same turn to take another attack with it. Can't move again, but you can take another attack with it. Uh, range is just a ranged attack. Um, bind is something only your Corruptor can do, which is essentially marking a loss to connect it to, to you, uh, which will make it move towards you, that model automatically next turn, um, rather than from the nearest uh, idol. Okay. Uh, and if you have a one that's bound, we don't at the moment, but if you have one that's bound, uh, you can take an action from your Corruptor called Call, which is basically like, just come here, and it makes it move. You. The Reaper can also call. Yeah, a Reaper that. can do that too. Okay. So essentially though, but your options are now like moving and an attack, be it ranged or um, melee attack. Let's get crazy here. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anyone play this game and on their first activation try an eternal power, so good on you. I think what I'm, what, what, I don't know how important yeah. is aggression versus uh, yeah. reaping souls. And so if I have a two activation, I should be able to reap a soul with these two. So what if I recall a soul to my totem, put them right here, so, and then reap them right away. Uh, good yeah. idea, but the recall brings your models. It's, oh. it's, 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 it's like, so you can pull them out back towards your totem. Yeah. Oh, a player model. Yeah. Player oh, model. Yeah. okay, not, not, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so maybe I won't mess with the complicated stuff just yet. And would you recommend uh, for the opening turns to, or does it, does, it, does it vary, to be aggressive, attack him, or to set up for reaping I, I souls? I think generally you want to always focus on reaping souls is like that that, that that is the main objective okay okay um, let's do that and so like here you have a couple of these lost and you have your reaper and your um so reaper, you, reaper and your corruptor so what would be ideal if you want to use within two turns uh uh reaping something like how so the reaper's range is What's the movement? Engaged. Is is so your speed, which is S on there. Yes, so your six inches. six inches, is that can that reaper get within one inch? Doesn't have For to sure. be. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you could spend a. You might want to do it. Not want to do it though. You could spend a token, move it, and try to reap it. So it's not a guaranteed thing. It's no, it's a roll. Thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Or what you could do is because you have two in a row, you have your corruptor. You could spend your first token to try to bind that lost. And if you successfully bind it, which is a little bit easier than successfully reaping it, then on your next token, you can move your reaper and try to reap it, which will it'll just uh, reduce the, the difficulty of... And other things can also bind, or is it the only thing that can bind? Yeah. O only the uh, corruptor can bind. Where's my other corruptor? You only have one. You only have one. Okay. okay. So you have one of each of those, and one totem, and then two of each of the other things. Okay. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to do a little bit of both. So I don't think I'm going to bind. I think what I want to do is I want to do a little bit of reaping and a little bit of killing. You know? Exactly. A That's a good of, first yep. intro turn. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to recommend. Just so. a little bit of reaping. Just just, <laughs> just the tip. <laughs> All right. So we'll uh we'll start with the uh the reaping um and this guy will move yeah. 6 inches. Yeah. yeah. So to uh attempt to reap you have to be engaged and, and engagement is just within once you hit that one inch threshold, you're engaged. Okay, so I move up to within one inch of yep. this poor lost soul. Um, so now you need to make a roll. So the, the two lost interactions are binding and reaping, okay. and they both use the corruption die. So you'll see okay. like in the column, the corruption it, yeah. die. The thing that's cool about that is if you look at the reaper and the corruptor, they have high ones. It's a D8, it's a D10, but then a lot of the other units have small ones. So when oh. you need to reap a model, an unbound lost, you have to roll a five. So right off the bat, anybody with a D4 can't, can't even hit a it. five. Right. But they so might be able to do it with, 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 with or, or no, with, with if it's bound, it makes it one easier. Yeah. So then they end up with a small chance. So yeah, you're going to be rolling a D10 for your Reaper. D10. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you're... This is a D10, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm not super good with like yeah, yeah, yeah. Poly anything other than a D6. You know, yeah. that, that's my whole world. Yeah. <laughs> so for an unbound lost, you need to hit a five. All right. 
Now, hold on a second. Uh, we didn't really get a chance to talk about the order abilities, but you have so, a really cool one there. So the one thing that sets all these factions apart in a game where both oh. rosters are the same is okay. everybody gets order abilities. Yeah. Okay. So we each person's flavor. faction gets a one universal rule that all their models have. And then each of the Lurker, Slayer, and, and Stalkers get like an extra cool thing as well. Mm. So one of the things that's neat about the Hollow is they do have this impending Doom rule. So you actually get a plus one to this rule. Okay. So you actually only need to get a four. All right. Anyone a fan of impending Doom? The band? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Oh, no, okay. I like heavy metal music. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. I need a four. Here God, here we go. Oh, the ten. That's a ten. Okay, not a zero. Okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, so I have. So you have successfully reaped that lost model. So you can remove that lost model from the board and just put it over here on your oh, side. That's and that's a spot for it. Yeah, yes. that's your side. Uh, now, also, what you would want to do is take your twenty. You've spent it, and you you can use that to mark the Reaper that that's been activated. Oh, I love that multi-purpose. Yeah. That is there so you go. nice. And your model remains on the board yeah. because it has the remains. So if you had successfully done that with any of your other models, both would disappear. Oh, but, but remain. It has the remain ability, so. Anyone else? Stay. Just the Reaper. Just the Reaper. Reaper. That's his job. Okay. Although there might be another faction that has that kind of like how you have impending doom. Again, yeah. giving each faction more like flavor and a unique play style. You know, honestly, that's so important for me. I, I love it when my thing that I'm playing feels unique and like I have some kind of ownership over it. So yeah. I think that's really cool that you guys have that for the factions. And we've really rolled the rules into the themes of the factions yeah. as well. So like all of your rules are very like creepy, hollow, ghostly, despair, kind of, depression. Whereas mine is yeah. like my all models is pain dealer. Of course. Right? Yeah. Right? So I just get a plus one mod on like damage rolls. Okay. For, you know, it's like I got chains okay. and hooks. Uh, right? so, you have a okay. so now, yeah, you have a uh, 19, right? So you, I do. You yeah. get the next thing. Let's check in the chat one moment here from Rufus Kid says, uh, Jeremy, my kid loves your videos. Excited to check out the game. I also love right them, on. but I was interested to pass that along. Okay. Nice. I appreciate that. Um, all right. I will go with my, I'm going to go with a Slayer, and I think I want to get the jump on at least one of your Slayers here Good before idea. you get to go. And so I'll go with uh, this one over here, and I'll walk up base to base and hit it. Yep. Yeah, so the engagement ranges we were talking about, you just have to get within one inch. Now at this point here, you might want to make sure that you don't get within one inch of both, otherwise okay. yes. they would get a combat advantage for having two models engaged with you, which okay. gives a plus one. But there should be a positioning where it's like you can get on one of them, but not within an inch of the other. Definitely, but I am opening myself to have you activate and, and then, then just move, move that yep. one or disengage Unless either one. you can one. destroy yep. his other model before he gets a chance to do that. That would be nice. I think so you're right just off the board. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. board. Yeah. Okay, so right about there should be good. I will put the 19 next Perfect. to them. And let's do a combat roll. We'll so we're, we're both slayers. Okay. So the A, you got an attack. You So we're rolling D20s for all this kind of stuff. Okay. Um, your modifier on your attack is a plus four and I'm rolling a D20 and my defense modifier as a slayer is a plus three. There's two. Oh, D, D. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. There's two steps to combat. First, there's a hitting step, and then there's sort of a wounding step. For yeah. sure. So you roll a So, yeah, D20s. we will roll D20s in a roll off. I get plus three on my defense. You get plus four on your attack. All right. And so if you win, you hit me. Wild. Ooh, I beat you by. Uh, I got 21, and you got a uh, uh, 18. 18. So you have successfully hit. Okay. Now you have to see if you actually inflict a wound. Okay. So that's your What's damage, damage die. die. So that will be D10. a D10. Okay. Now here, this is not good for me. Slayers are the gla glass cannon. Ah. We, we, this CP, this corruption powered uh, uh, die, that's my. That's what I'm rolling to. What is the P? Protection. Protection. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna roll a D10, and I have to uh, tie or beat it with a D4. Oh, okay. And and if I, and this, you can see the the Slayer only has one wound. Yes. So if this fails for me, he's dead already. Yes. But the cool thing about D10s and D20s is that it's mathematically possible for you to still be Absolutely. if yeah. you know if the dice aren't in my favor. So got it. Yeah. You know, that's nice. All right. Let's see what we do with D10. And yeah. Eight. So I, I'm not even gonna roll. Okay. You kill him, so you can remove my Slayer from the board, and uh, that is our first death. But you Very see how good. that particular column though is dual purpose, right? You yes. use the same die to interact with the lost as the one you use to defend yourself. So it's kind of like a measure of... Just like how much power, power energy you have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that worked out very well as a very That was a very turn good for me. first go. You yeah, win. Yeah. I'll have you know yeah. that whenever we have a guest on this show that shows me a game, I pretty much always win, so... <laughs> That's great. Out. You'll out. see the combat's like really high stakes. Like yes. Every decision, like yes. all the models have one wound except for the Corruptor and the Reaper, they have two wounds. Okay. But other, la other than that, you'll see kind of what happened there. The models die instantly. Yeah. Um, and he, this person has fury, so you can, but, but you, can but, but you can't move. So here's the thing from oh, okay. my perspective. You now can't move that model again, but you can activate it again to hit. 
So Still I away. could move my guy into combat and hit you, but I know that then you'll be able to have a chance to hit back. Yeah. But if I just stay there, you can't. Yeah. Right? So perfect. Uh, but what is nice is that I can definitely put a lot of pressure onto your Reaper, which can be bad news. <laughs> Uh, Don Haney's asking, why is Black Magic Craft uh, not showing us how to make awesome terrain in real time? Because they made a game <laughs> yeah. uh, that also features terrain in a big way. I know some of these abilities allow you to move the terrain yeah, and manipulate yeah. it, which actually is a pretty cool feature of the game that you don't often see in other miniature war games, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, I so I have moved my Slayer into engagement range with your Reaper. All so right. I'm going to hit your Big Daddy Reaper. With All right, my so my defense for a Reaper is a one? <laughs> uh, is a one, right. So yeah. I, I don't roll a die at all, really? No, no, you roll d20, but you just... Oh, that's a modifier. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, it's a modifier. Not, not the... It's like, is it a... But I get a... The attacking step. Yeah, I get a plus four on this, so... Uh, I get a 11. I got an 11, too. Yeah. What does Tying do? You get it. You're oh, good. No. Yeah, tie, goes <laughs> tie goes to the defender. All right. So the now, beginner's the, luck is coming in strong. you're engaged, though... Uh, you now can't take a bunch of actions. You can't reap, and if you want to get away from him, you have I basically to yeah. tied up your reaper. Not a bad thing for the objective taker either to yeah, tie up exactly. their enemy reaper. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that was an 18, and I will spend my 17 to fury and try that again. Oh. Okay. Nice, and that's that works. That was good as an opening turn because now you can. Uh, it's not very good. <laughs> oh but, uh, no, buddy. Seven. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, so he oh here's a good thing. Okay, so me? yeah, explain it. Sure. Sorry. What? Because I hit okay, his so die. Well, because <laughs> <you, no. laughs> you successfully defended really well. Oh, yes. okay. so you in your defense roll, you beat him by five. So okay. if you do that, you get to take a backlash. So, you so basically, back you parry, right, back. right? Yeah. So now you get to attack back with your Reaper to me. Uh, so your Reaper has no modifier. No modifier. But you roll your D twenty. Okay. Yeah, I get a plus zero in defense. And I'm, I'm so good. Do you get to? No, 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 no oh, infinite loops. Yeah, that'd be like so many like feints no, and parries. And that like... would just like be a whole game. I know, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Two models there. Uh, the other time backlashes come up is say if you want to move away from that Reaper or mm -hmm. from that Slayer now without taking the disengage action, mm -hmm. you would get a That's backlash. That's like a backlash. So what you're doing yeah. is you're breaking the engage status. Okay, okay. Um, right, you move on. I'm gonna read some of these abilities. So yeah. On my turn, maybe I can use one. Yeah, maybe you could use one too. That's a little bit, uh, takes a little bit to get to know them all, I'm still learning. <laughs> well, I can give you some tips too. Like, yeah. for example, oh. Shockwave might be a cool one that you would uh, deliver from your Reaper and just knock his Slayer back three inches. Um, oh, I want but to again, disengage. Yeah, it's, especially if you know at the start of next round you want to be able to move your Reaper without having to say you know take a backlash things like that. Yeah. Um, I also love using um, Echo Form where you just kind of can plop a piece of terrain on the board as long as it has a footprint of four inches or less. That's why there's some terrain that's not yeah. on the yeah. board yeah. because it can come in later. Uh, so I will. Uh, I got the 16 here, and I will try to bind this lost model with my corruptor. Uh, which remind me, JP here. What to, it's a, to, your, to bind with oh, my so corruption. Oh, four up. Uh, with my D8, though? Yeah, with your yeah. corruption die. D8. Yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah, his corruption die is a D8, and the target value is a four to successfully bind it. And I don't do it. This is unfortunate. Yeah. So, so that was your action. Uh, that was my action, and now my next initiative token is an 11, so you should probably have some. Yeah, I have uh, 15, 14, 13, 12. So I have yeah. a lot of room here to mess around. Don Haney says that I conveniently forgot uh, my Frostgrave experience, which actually is apt that we brought it up, because yep. it's another D20. Uh, uh, a lot of this this yeah. game, certain aspects of it were like openly and directly influenced by, like not Frostgrave as a game in particular, but all of his games that exist in that universe use a certain combat system, and this is very akin to that. Yeah, um, and in that game, I got destroyed by the gas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that was a different experience. All right, so let's let's try to activate a different one of these models. The three candle ones are called the Stalker. Now, what would you guys say is the main function of a Stalker? What, are they kind of a hybrid thing? They can thing? move really far. Really far, okay. And they can move through terrain unimpeded. The other thing, too, is they have a mm. D6 as their corruption die, so they kind of become a last minute, you know, if you need to reap, you can generally hit a reap with a D6 if you're trying to get a five or a four. Actually with a and and what is, what is uh, your, so your, and your stalker will have a special ability on your 
Oh yeah, so that my is stalker has enduring. When resolving an attack, ranged attack, or attack power, where the model is the defender, it adds plus one modifier to its resistance roll. Yeah. Okay. So when you, you roll a d6 to, you know, during the wounding step, you get a plus one. Wonderful. It's basically hard to kill. Your stalkers have a really cool one called uh, uh, the vessel, which allows them to be beacons as well. So when we were talking about delivering eternal powers through your corruptor and your reaper, well, your stalkers get to do that as well. So anytime you want to deliver one of those powers, you can also measure it from one of your slayers. Sorry, slayer. I, I kept saying yeah. stalker. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got you. I got you. Too many S words. Knock <laughs> um, it back. Might be interesting. Okay. Um, this is a four candle. So that's a lurker. Lurkers don't have the... I'm looking for the ability to reap someone is a... What is that, call? No. Oh, yeah. So uh, if you want to try to... Uh, th that would be your... Um, corruption die would be what you would be using. If you oh, wanted. everyone can do this. Okay, yes. okay. Everyone okay. can attempt a reap. But, okay. Um, okay. So that is uh, a lurker, right? You said. So your uh, corruption die is a d4. So you won't, you you, you can't because you have to hit a five. To okay. He could as the as, or, the, as oh, the hollow. Oh, yeah. you could. You have a twenty five percent. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's try to bind this lost and then reap it with my corruptor. Which has a better chance of getting it with a D8 on its corruption so, die. So um, you 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 could. The only thing is you're, you you can only bind with a corruptor. So once you've activated it to bind, yes, you won't be able yes. to this turn. I figured because I have 14, 15, 13, and 12, Actually, I should just uh, yeah I, sh I should set up for it, make yeah, sure it happens. Yeah. You could run in with your stalker and reap it, maybe something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. You yeah. could uh, push uh, the uh, the slayer out of the way or kill it, the one that's engaged with the reaper, so at least your reaper can maybe reap it next round if you fail to reap it with one of your other oh, dice. There's okay. you yeah. know, ways of kind of stacking up. But yeah, yeah you're right. When up. you have a bunch of tokens in a row, it gives you a chance to sort of plan. Yeah. But, yeah. I think I think we I think we should do that. So I will I will move. Do I need to move? What's the range on binding? Nine inches. Everything nine in the inches. game is nine inches when we're talking about range, so binding and your shooting attacks. And you can see it. So Yeah. Okay, so I should definitely I think I should move just to maybe encourage some other, uh, the lo they call lost souls. Yeah, the lost. Yeah, the lost, yeah. The lost to uh, move around in certain areas. So maybe I will. Is a six-inch move for most most things? Yep. I'll come out here, and then I will try to bind that. And then I, I think I missed you doing it, but it's a roll, right? Yeah. So you are rolling your corruption die, which is uh, a d eight. Uh, eight for the corruptor, and you are trying to hit a four. I hit a four. All right, fifty. Let's go. You nope. Don't. nope. Do it. All right. That's that person's turn. So, so that's my fifteen. That's activated. Okay. And then that can't fight, but this one can fight. Yes. And so I think I'll just walk into base to base, and then I will attack. And so I'm rocking there a D twenty. Yeah. Um, also, now you have combat advantage. Oh, you have two, two models engaged. Extra plus one. Extra plus two, actually. Plus two. Okay, so plus two with my normal modifier of plus four, so it's a plus six. Yeah, and, right and I have a plus three. All right. Yeah. Oh, we do. Oh, Ooh, I, not great. Uh, okay, so that's how this might be relevant, I have right? Eight. No, you have eight, and I have eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, not quite five. Not quite five. It was like enough that I had to check the math to see if I could backlash. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I do have a 13, so I could just attempt to do that again. Exactly. Yes. Yep. But I, let's see if we can... So let's let's do a, let's do an ability, maybe. Okay. Uh, and I want one of you two guys to recommend one for me to hear. That would be good for me to use. Well, so if he's think? got any slayers right now that haven't been activated yet, Mm. Um, sometimes those you are should. good ones to put the held. No, I have a dead one. Oh, the one dead dead one. oh yeah, you have a dead one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So held is good for like holding the grasp, down. I guess it's called the power there. But yeah, it gives you the. It makes a model become held. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have a. Yeah, you have a sequence, so you. Um, some of the higher powers that cause a lot of damage, uh, you might have difficulty getting off this turn. For sure. Plus zero. Yeah. But, you know, everybody loves Cataclysm, everybody loves Cosmic Blast. That's just like, you know, instant damage to other models. Yeah. You try to... Okay. Um, yeah, more there's there's also thing. something fun you could do, which is Morph, okay. which basically lets you switch places with models. Oh. So you could, like, try, attempt to Morph and, uh, like, say, switch places with that with your Reaper and either oh. like your Slayer to use later or an unactivated yeah. model. 
get, get it out of. So oh, that's yeah. kind of fun. Let's do that. So maybe with. maybe I like uh, morph with like the lurker over here or something like that, and then get this out here. Now I'm close to another soul. Yeah. Let's Correct. do that. Yeah. That yeah. sounds fun. So yeah. we're gonna use uh, an ability. I can't remember the name Called of it. Morph. Uh, oh, sorry. Or an eternal power. Eternal power. Called uh, morph. It goes up on a seven up. There's no modifiers for eternal powers this turn. But I could burn one of these to get yes. plus two. Good. Yeah. Um, no, it's not plus two. It's plus, uh, plus, four. Four. plus four. Plus four. Plus four. Yeah. I'm risking it for the biscuit. I'm gonna do D1. Yeah. Okay. Oh, ooh, okay. Um, is, is it a D20? Uh, it's a D12. D12. Mm. Do I, have, I like, do I want to do this turn? Is it? So, see, my recommendation is if it's a point in the game where you just need something to go off. I, I would don't say think at I this need point. This. I, I mean, it's one of those things where. Need it, need it. Um, yeah. Do you think that if it doesn't work, you're going to spend your next token to try it again? No. Because if you're not, then you don't have to. But if you are, then you're better off combining them. Yeah. I kind of want to just try it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I won't combine it. Okay, so we're going to use my 13th initiative uh, for morph. I'll morph the, the lurker and the, uh, the reaper. reaper. Yeah. And I'm doing it on a D12. So they're 12 inches apart. And the L means line, so you got to have a line of sight. Yeah, which, which they do. Yeah. yeah, they're good. Like, okay. Yeah. Do other uh, models block line of sight, or is that is that kind of harder to determine? Or it's just it's a true it, line of sight. As long as you can see something okay. on it. Okay. Elbow. Is it D12, right? Yeah. All right, I need a seven and a twelve, so ah, one, one with the modifier is not, not good. good. Not good. No. Okay. Uh, Thoughts are high. It's like an ace. All right, cool. And then for the twelfth uh, option. Um, Your lurkers have a cool power called Shriek, so once oh, they hit yes. so if they hit something and don't kill it, they become stunned. Uh, oh, you oh. could basically take a shot at his lurker, which is in the ruins right by your stuff there. That, no, I was looking oh, at this one over here. Oh, here. Yeah, so you have two lurkers here. If one of them takes a shot at his lurker, then you take his lurker's range ability away, because if he's stunned, he can't take the range attack. That sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. I love, I love that. A little bit of defensive, a little bit of aggressive. And again, you're allowed to move up to six inches in either direction if you want. You have nine inch range on your actual range attack. Okay, I think what I want to do is I'm going to move my guy right here, mm -hmm. which will encourage this loss to move toward the bulk of my yes. troops. And then I will shriek at you with yep. my lurker. Is that a, a rolled die? Yep. It's exactly the same as the close combat attack. Okay, you, uh, so it's a roll off with d20s. Okay. And you would add your attack modifier, he to adds his defense modifier. To my uh, lurker. To my lurker. Okay, so I'm, I'm at a defense of two. I'm at a three. I'm, I'm at a defense of two, but I'm also in. Like this, yes, right. this, I'm in terrain, for being terrain. Yeah. Uh, which means I'm obscured. Okay. It's a kind of just a binary. I'm in some terrain. There's some stuff in the way. I got a plus one. Perfect. That, plus that, that's what it should be. Yeah. Plus two. All right. So you're plus at a, two. Sorry. You're at a net plus five. Then I'm at a net plus three. So you're you're at a nine. At a I'm nine. actually no. I'm at a net plus four. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm you are good. very good. So does this get a pair attack? Because oh, because no, range no, or no? It's range. Only All right, range. cool. So that was uh, that didn't do it for me, and I think we're back to you That's now. Long for him, I think. Was this? Yes. Oh, that one. That was this guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I got an eleven and a ten. Um. <laughs> um. Oh, actually, there's a command for Isles of Torment in the chat, right, Evan? Yeah. Uh, it's just game. All right, typing exclamation mark game in the chat channel will help you guys find Isles of Torment and find things you can pick up for it if you wanted to play it. STLs, tokens, cards, models, everything. Check it out. You need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what do I want to do now? I'm a little bit like... So anytime you have a modifier, whether it's being obscured for being in terrain or having combat advantage, like for having two models engaged, it's always plus twos. And we went with plus two, just basic, some basic statistics, because you're always rolling d20s. Mm -hmm. There was an early version of the rules where it was plus ones, and there just wasn't really a statistic advantage of a plus one on a d20 roll. So yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. One of those things that you figure out once you start playing. It, you know, it seems like a fine idea <laughs> to have a plus one minus one advantage, but. Yeah. Not a huge thing. Okay, so I... How are you going to pull this back from being absolutely wrecked right now, Jeremy? You can't, <laughs> you can't lose a Euro game, okay? Um, Uh-oh. talking shit right now. <laughs> JP, <laughs> hey, yeah. JP loses his own game all the time. <laughs> it's my turn to lose it. Okay, so I'm going to try to do something a little bit tricky here in the sense that I have a six-inch movement, okay? Which is just barely enough for my Reaper to move six inches and be within an inch of this uh, loss, but not within an inch of you. It's like, yeah, it looks right. Looks it's right. very close, but that's what I'll do. So I'll move that uh, Reaper, and I'm gonna try to 
reap that. Oh, so, yo, dude, stunning reapers with my uh, lurker with shriek. That would be nice. So Wait, absolutely, It'd be very they can't they can't reap then, right? It's it. not just a combat thing. Okay, yeah. cool. Very cool. So I'm gonna roll my corruption die, which right. is d10, that. and That's I'm good. looking for a five. On that card, all the actions that say where you can't reap if you're engaged. Essentially, if you stun somebody, they they act like they're engaged for all intents and purposes. Okay. They can't reap. They can't take the range action. Can't bind. Engaged in the end of my level. Yep. Nope. Reap. Okay. So you didn't get your roll. I I, I failed. Didn't roll a one though. No, I didn't roll a one. Uh, so yeah, if if you're attempting to reap a lost and you roll a one, the lost do something cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, I, think so got, I have a ten. You got a couple more. Yeah. Or uh, just you, you must have a nine. Right? I have a nine. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I will use this lurker here. To take a ranged attack at your Reaper. All right. Here to here. Very so nice. your Reaper will also count as being obscured because you're actually engaged with an enemy model. Okay. So yeah, my Reaper two. has a defense value of plus one, so plus three total and on D20s. Yeah, my so Reaper pro already. Is got it, it. Got plus it. Yeah. three. Oh, six. Oh. I got a six net as well. Exactly. Tie goes to the defender. Yep. Ah. Can't believe you Dang. won that on a roll of a three <laughs> with a bad modifier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I'm up on a nine. Um, let's see here. So you aren't engaging me here because no. you uh, wisely stayed out of engagement. You know what? I'm going to fury and swing another time go. with my slayer. So slayer versus slayer. Slayer and slayer action. And I get a plus two modifier it. because of that. Yeah, I'm at advantage. So I'm at a plus six. I can do it. Nine. Uh, so I'm. You're nine, and I'm only a seven there. Yeah. All right, so I somehow managed to hit on a three. The combat advantage was worth yeah. it. It yeah. was, 100%, yeah. So yeah. roll your uh, D10. D10 and, for and, and, and if you roll above a four, I won't roll a dice. Okay. I'll just be dead. This is a D10, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, That's oh, a ten. This is a ten. <laughs> oh, no. So, you slice them into many pieces. Oh, no. So you have actually killed um, my most aggressive damage dealing units from what is probably the most aggressive damage dealing order order in fact yeah. like yeah so that's like a so that's, this that's game good. is not it doesn't matter i'm gonna scoring. go ahead and start a yeah. prediction <laughs> don't be careful though one of the crazy things about this game is that it's never over until it's over because there's so many things that can swing yeah I, I think and just like wait till the next card you could all turned. of a sudden just go reap two lost and like win the game and only have one model left if you yeah. were only able to get one lost yeah. uh, there's yeah, a yeah. lot of crazy things that happen and that's where the eternal powers really start to become very strategic where you're like, i'm gonna throw a piece of train here and keep my guy alive by hiding in this corner and Okay, or giving him a defensive advantage or something like yep. that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. What do I want to do now? I want my degenerate gambling. My. I got within nine. <laughs> if you guys don't know, we're tr we're checking out Idols of Torment, a game made by uh, Jeremy and JP here. Uh, They've developed it over the course of the last two years, had a whole crowdfunding, crowdfunding period, and now it is available for retail, uh, which should be, uh, you can find a link at exclamation mark game in the chat channel. It's available IRL. I know, in amazing? the real world, it's, it's all amazing. in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, have you seen all the cardboard boxes? <laughs> I feel you, brother. Yeah. I feel you. It's, uh, it's a problem. Just, you, just you, out of camera shot. Yeah, you know, every single boxes. camera shot in this studio. Is you, you also get a Christmas card from Uline every year? Yeah, yeah. I do. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I moved it's my dialogue. lurker to get a little bit closer, Ooh. and I'm going to take a ranged attack at your Reaper. Quit it! Okay. Okay, so I... Uh, so are you <laughs> in engaged range with his stalker, though? I'm not supposed to be. Yeah, I have free movement. I right. didn't mean to be. Okay. All right, so my Reaper has a defense of one, so I'll get plus one on my d20. Uh, plus two, because you're... Oh, no, no I'm dead. You're no longer... <laughs> All right, we got a crit. Uh, a natty 20. That's probably not yeah. good for you. No, no probably not. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. have two wounds as a Reaper. Yeah, okay, nice. you're not dead. Uh, okay, so my damage die is a d8, and... Uh, so a 20 automatically hits, doesn't matter what your modifiers are. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll my damage die twice and pick the better one. one. Yeah. Get advantage, okay. Yeah, so a three or a two. Wow, oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> so that's a three. Plus one. Plus, oh, 
ah, sorry, yes, because of my scorn all model abilities, I have a plus one modifier oh, on that. So nice. uh, my highest roll was a three, right? Four, so, so four damage. Four, 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 uh, four whatever. Yeah, four Probably damage. Like so you roll your corruption die, which is d10, and you want to hit a four or higher. Okay, so that, that's the number I'm hitting. Okay. Nope. nope. And you don't. Okay, so uh, I inflict a wound, but you have two wounds. Is it yep, two correct. Yep. Okay. So it also will become held, which is another one of yeah. uh, the lurker special days. But in this case, it doesn't really matter because you've already been activated. Yeah. Okay. So the only yeah my line. my lurkers actually like shoot out chains and wrap you up and hold you, and As you are you, you are held, uh, but you're already activated and can't move anyway, so okay. I'm not super relevant. Okay, that was my eight. I have a five next. All right, I have a seven and a six. Um, so you've already gone with your reaper, uh, so I shouldn't bother with stunning him or her or whatever it is now. Um, so that's a good thing to remember for later. Um, but let's see if I can... Unless you want to damage it. That's always a good thing. That's true, too. But I, I, I've, I've done a lot of damage to Jeremy's. So had a far. strong start. Yeah, so I think I think I should focus more on the reaping of souls. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe what I can do, there was an ability that did, made, essentially bound something. Empower is a pretty cool ability. So what it does is it can temporarily turn one of your models into a corruptor, essentially, giving it the bind action. Okay. So giving empower to a stalker is actually a very good move because stalkers yeah. have a d6 as their corruption die. Okay. And when you need to roll four up to bind. Well, so you could use this stalker to try to bind this lost here. Yeah. But you'd first have to successfully get the power yeah. off. Do I only have one corruptor? Yes. yes. Okay, so I've already tried to get the bind thing you, off. You, you, th okay. There is no other way you can naturally try to bind in this turn okay. with, with your corruptor because it's... No, it does take two tokens because you'd have to use one to do the empower and then the second one to activate that model and actually take the bind action. So it's a little so here's bit what of... I think I'm going to do. I know I have one activation left. I don't think you can really threaten what I'm going to try to do. It's so like I'm going to spend two on the empower, and then I'm going to, in the future, then do my thing. So I didn't do this last time. I did invest two tokens getting a spell off mm -hmm. last time. But I think I will now, and just to speak my strategy out loud, which you wouldn't do in a normal game. But I think I'll, I'll use it here, I'll empower him, and then on my fourth activation, I'll go for that. Because I don't think in one activation in between six and four, you're going to mess with that plan too much with your dude. Unless you just walk up and reap it and get lucky, you know? Yeah. Which, you know... I'll try this out and see what happens. So, um, what do you think also about do that? something really nasty and actually bind that loss there so that the one that's right in front of his Reaper so that he can't reap it next round. That would be really nasty. But he already went with the Reaper, right? Yeah, but he and tried again. It's not bound. Reaper. I tried to reap it without binding it first. If um, but it, if you, you bind it, it, I can't reap it. Oh. Binding that's... is a really cool mechanic that not only makes it easier for you to reap, but it prevents them from running off the board. Instead, they're going to run towards you, but also prevents mm. your opponent from being able to reap them. So if, if if that one is bound to you and I want to try oh. to rebuild, I would have to then try to first bind it to me and like... Okay. I think I'm actually misinterpreting w exactly what I have to do because this yeah. gives bind to a model to then yep. use. Yes. yes. Exactly. So I couldn't with this number four then bind and reap a no. soul. Okay. No. So then I, I shouldn't spend both these tokens on just getting the ability off because I wouldn't have enough left to do the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. But so just to be clear, he can't activate this one again, right? Not yet. Okay, not yet. Not until next turn. So if I bind it, though, it doesn't last into the next turn. It does. It does. Oh, I shit! Mean, okay! It lasts until that lost is reaped, um, or it, or if I were to bind it. Okay. Or if you kill the model that it's or if, Oh, yeah, or if I kill the model that it's bound to. Okay. I love the candle things on the base. It's incredibly helpful. Um, okay, so the lurkers are kind of far away. Yeah, no, it, having bound loss on the board is never a bad thing. It's always a good thing. That is a good point. Man, okay, so I only have three left, so I can't do exactly what I wanted to do. But maybe I just risk it again, try to empower this guy to give him bind, and then bind this thing, and then go and get it later on. That's a lot of ifs. That's a lot of risk. Um, so that may... And there's two enemies over there that could potentially take out your model. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good point. All right, I don't want to spend too long deliberating here. So let's just... Let's just do it. I'm going to try to empower this lurker. Yeah. Uh, to give him the bind ability. We're just going to risk it for the biscuit. So uh, you have a 12 inch range, so just make sure that from one of your beacons you have that. Oh, yeah. Shit. Which, is, which, which you do. Yeah. Um, I'm sure from this is a beacon and I'm sure it's within 12 inches. Yeah. Okay. 
So this is where you like put on your black hood because you're the eternal and you shoot the energy down into that corruptor and then it goes out. <laughs> yeah. It just beams him. Okay. So on a D12. Yes. I need a. Um, uh, not that one. Uh, you want the one that almost is like a D20 but isn't. <laughs> 40 months, Mike Genie. God damn. Mike Genie, thank you for this. Uh, what is happening? Star Wars Acolyte trailer dropped today. Oh, that's the movie. That is the that is the High Republic Star Wars movie, right? Am I are, are, right about that? I can't remember. Oh, right. I'm very excited about that. All right, here we go. Give me the look. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. So now that lurker, this one has the bind. has bind, and yeah. so now with my sixth activation, I will. Oh, but then he can't go again. Not him, but you have another model around somewhere, don't you? Yeah, but also binding lasts. Binding will carry okay. through to yeah, the next this turn. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. You're, you're, what you're doing right now is trying to set up so on the next turn mm -hmm. I can't easily reap this. Yes. Yeah, so I think uh, I think knowing everything that I know now, I think maybe I don't really have anything over there to then reap that guy. At least right now, that guy could get over there. Yeah. Are we cool with premise ring? Is that a thing in this oh, game? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, hell yeah. I'm definitely gonna buy that then. All right, I'll try to bind that at least. Uh, okay, cool. So I have plus one in my bind. My lurker uh, has a uh, corruption die of a D four, so it's gonna give. Oh, that's a stalker. That's a stalker. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So you have a D six. Yeah. Oh, D six. Okay, cool. Yeah. And that's plus one, because of bind, right? Uh, nope. There's no. no plus one. It's just uh, you're gonna roll your D six oh. and you're gonna try to hit a four. Oh, so binding is just uh, claiming this is mine. Claiming yeah, this. but yeah. It, that does give you a plus one on the reaping. Yeah. Oh, the reaping. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see if I bind it. I cannot bind it. No, no worries. All right, that was a, that was an attempt. All right, here we go. Uh, what do I got here? I got a five. Um, all right, you can, you can do a little bit of cleanup here now. Yeah, I feel like, do I have any unactivated? Yeah, I got those guys. Does Miniac announce falls while playing a game? I do not. I do not subs though. It's a series. Oh, there's a, uh, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely like movies more than TV shows. Yeah, um, for a long time, that changed and my attention span only worked for TV series, mm -hmm. but I'm firmly disconnected from that. I'm back on the movie train 100%. Okay. <laughs> okay. I did watch the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith series. Oh yeah, with Don Glover? Really good. Okay. Really good. Cool. Okay, so my stalker uh, can move nine inches. Yep. And it's gonna go, through this train, no problem, with its agile ability, and come up and engage your corruptor. Mm. And I will take uh, an attack on your corruptor. So All right, no uh, my stalker is, I'm a plus two here. All right, I'm just straight up whatever I roll. And that's a 20. Oh. Ooh. Okay, so you You're, win. You know, yeah, you got no mods. No mods. Um, okay, so that hits. And I'm going to be rolling a d6 six. for my damage. And you roll your corruption die. When that is a six, which uh, your corruption die is a d8. So I could defend. I need a six or higher. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Get it. Okay, right. so, so you have a, has two wounds as well. It's got two wounds. Yeah. Okay. And that was my five. And I'll let you know uh, that my special ability for stalkers is something called subjugate, which my stalkers have the fury ability. So uh, it can hit again. Okay, okay. Yep. So I might need to deal with that then. Um, do people get a defense bonus when the attacker is being engaged by more people? So like if I walk no. in with this, okay, no. No, it's just for a combat advantage for the attacker. Okay, okay, okay. So maybe I should just walk in with that, uh, the one candle, two candle? Uh, the three, candle three candle, three yeah, candle, uh, stalker. And just swing on that guy because he will get a combat advantage. Yeah, to try to kill him. him. Yeah, why not? I'm not gonna reap anything. Uh, everything I can't bind anymore because that guy can bind and yep. he's, he went already. And you already did the thing where you gave that guy the ability to do it, but you've activated him. Mm -hmm. And now you mm -hmm. can't even, neither of us can use Empower again this turn. Right, right. So. And then that does range stunning, which is awesome, but not right now. Yep. So yeah, I'll just walk in. I'll walk in and I'll hit. Um, okay. Lurker is swinging, has an attack advantage of three plus two for the neighboring Tormentor. Tormentor? Corruptor. Uh, Corruptor. Yeah. Um, I like that name though. Tormentor. Tormentor. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's actually a character from a video game I used to play called Heroes of New Earth. I, I, th I think we realized Earth. after that all of the unit names I came up with that were all Urs, someone says like, yeah, that's all StarCraft names. Yeah. And oh, I didn't know that. that. I've never played StarCraft. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. 
Not on purpose. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, they're, I mean, they're all very fitting names. So. Yeah. It's also so all we, metal band names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, Corruptor, I, yeah, I didn't want to sure. say this, but that, that was a thrash metal band from my high school that I used to see all the time. I mean, I'm sure, I'm, there, surely there's a band oh, called a Reaper and Stalker. There's and a Lip. bazillion, yeah. I think there's a band called Slayer, maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Have you ever been to the website metalarchive.net? I have. Yeah, it's it's been, like uh, every single known metal band ever. It is such a huge encyclopedia. Oh, yeah. So a uh, uh, stalker versus stalker, right? I'm a plus five right now, so I got a ten. Uh, and I only have a plus two on this roll. Oh, he beat me. Oh yeah. And he beat me by. Sorry, I have a plus four on this roll. So you yeah. get a parry. Oh, now. this is a backlash. Yeah. Backlash. yeah. Or yeah, yeah. A, a backlash. Yeah. So I am going to attack you. My attack is a plus two. Uh, so I have that's an eight. My defense on a stalker. This is a four. A four. All right. Oh, there you good. go. Very good. All right. So having a little combat right now. All right. And I think it's all you for the last three. Okay. Um, have all the models been activated? They shouldn't be. You no, I have one. Okay. Yeah. Just because that's relevant where sometimes if we have tokens uh, left, uh, if every idle model has been activated, yeah. turn ends. So here's a, uh, just a point of strategy. <laughs> I have one model that's unactivated. I definitely don't want to like just do something with it and activate it when I have three tokens. Right, yeah, right? you like, want to set up to have a yeah, like, activation with some um, abilities. So okay. I certainly would like to... Take two powers. Do a power here, what do I want to do? Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of chat in uh, the chat about movies versus TV shows, a good split. Some people oscillate, some people prefer TV shows. Um, I think I like movies just because uh, I feel like a lot of TV shows take for granted their audience's attention. And like, I hate it when someone's like, you gotta get to episode four. It's like, dude, in a movie, that fat is trimmed and cut. It's like, there is no, you gotta get to the second mm -hmm. hour to enjoy this movie. It's like, it should rock right away or not rock right away. So that's what I like that. You know, there's, there's this other thing going on with how they make shows now where they're like, oh, we're on a streaming service. So we don't have commercial breaks. So like the, the flow through an episode oftentimes just sucks. Because mm, they're mm. not like trying to hit that. We have to like get all this valleys and peaks. Yes. We got 12 and a half minutes, and then the first break comes, and we need a hook. Okay. And yeah. they're just like, ah, whatever. We can meander for 30 minutes. It's fine. Uh, slow burns are good, but I feel like that is a really hard kind of content to make and not have it suck. At least that, <laughs> yeah. that's what I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use my three and my two to like focus on trying to do Cataclysm, which is still going to be a difficult one to uh, do with no modifier there. I'm looking for a nine um, minus uh, four? Five. Plus four. Plus four. I have plus four, so I need to hit a, a five. A little AOE explosion. Okay. I have to hit a five on my D12. Okay, so good odds, good odds. <laughs> You did yes. it. Okay, right. so I successfully did Cataclysm, and what this does is select a point on the table within reach. So I'm I'm doing it through um, this beacon, uh, and the point I'm going to select is here. You bastard! Um, and then it's like resolve an attack power against. Actually, I'm going to be real smart. I'm going to make the point. Oh no! I'm going to make you can the. Get all three. You can I'm going to make the point here. And hit these three. Yeah, you can okay. Go. For sure. So I'll, I get to resolve an attack power against each of them, which will go one by one. Right. Uh, now I am attacking not as a model, but as the Eternal, and my modifier on attack roll is five. For all, like so, it's pretty. It's pretty good. So okay. So first we'll go to your corruptor. So I'm gonna roll same as if we were doing combat face to face d20, but I have a plus five. Roll badly. So that's a twenty. No, oh, no, you win. Okay. So that hits. Now the spell has the damage die on it, so it's a D8. So you'll get to, you know, try to miss there. Oh, that's oh, a one. one, so you're you're, you're good. Pass. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I can yeah. tie it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so now let's do your <laughs> Reaper. Okay, this is also awesome. I don't want to die. Yeah. Um, defense. Oh, you got a good chance. So I missed uh, eight. Oh no! I actually one, lose. One. I, got, I have a plus one. Yeah, so I got a two. Okay. So <laughs> I hit. Fucking D20s, man. Yeah. Oh my god. I hit, but I still have to like actually like oh, wound yes, you. So yes. again, a D8 yeah. I'm versus a D your D10. D10. It's a three. <sighs> My, okay, Woo! no wound. This could be or, so bad. This could have been so could, bad. It could be cataclysmic. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yes. Nice. Uh, okay, now you're uh, Slayer. All right, Slayer. So I'm hitting Ooh. you with a 24. 17. Oh, uh, uh, so for the Slayer is a plus three, so I'm at, I'm at 20. Not quite. So you got it. You got it. Uh, so again, my D8. And D8. 
D4. And that's a four, Ooh, so five, you have a okay. chance. Okay, Roll I, have four, a chance. I don't get a single. There you uh, go. Christ. So if I like successfully got off Cataclysm, which is a harder one to do, and you didn't, didn't kill, didn't kill anybody, yeah. well, you killed the Slayer. Yes. I did. I said if I had it, that would yeah, suck. That'd be so sad. Uh, so that's that, and then I have one uh, left, and I am going to move my other stalker. Last model. Nine inches, it can move through the stream. It's got agile. And I'm going to engage your Reaper. All right. And I am going to take an attack with it. So I am a uh, plus two. Oh, two, sorry. 14. I'm at a plus one, so I'm at a 14. Four, yeah, because that's good. You're good. Ties right. always go to the defender? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that concludes the, because now all the tokens are used or whatever, all the malls are activated, uh, the round ends. So the most difficult part about this game is making sure you don't miss any of these tokens when you collect <laughs> them. Uh, they look really cool in gold. Feel free to paint them neon orange in yeah. your own game. Yeah. Okay, so a little turn one recap. He lost his Slayers. Uh, I lost one of my Slayer uh, and also reaped one lost yeah. soul. Um, so not How many rounds does this game typically have? Uh, we've seen everything from two rounds to six rounds. Six um, is the max. It yeah. can't go past a certain point. He's... The average is probably about four. Um, and the rounds, yeah. each round gets quicker than the previous. Oh, dude. Yeah, I absolutely love to watch the extended versions of Lord of the Rings. I was actually, I'm watching it with my wife right now for the first time. And we just got to the Return of the King, which is four and a half hours yeah. long. And she's like, "Can we just watch the not extended version?" And I was like, "No, <laughs> no one watches can't. that. Yeah, we everyone watches the long one." That, that's, and she was like, "Okay." <laughs> that's JP's family yeah, Christmas we watch it tradition. Every year Christmas, yeah. Return of the King. Yeah. Well, no, all, the soul all, thing. Oh, all of them. Nice. Yeah, and, and since getting the Hobbit, we actually even throw the Hobbit into. It's basically what we do oh, that gosh. Christmas week. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. I love that. All right. So now. Okay. So now. All these They're are back on set. the table. Those are all in the bag. Excellent. And we are going to move on to the next turn. Uh, so, remember, so first we'll flip a echo card here and okay. see what happens. Let's see what we get for our echo. Okay. So interestingly, the lost will move towards a totem rather than away from a idol. Mm -hmm. um, the we're going to get an extra two tokens to draw on top of how many models we have. And these yes. eternal powers are too easier to do. Yeah, easier now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so the magic in the air is crackling. It's more yeah. active. Okay. Excellent. So I have. Did I miss something? No. Nope, no. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I have. I have six uh, idols on the board. So I'm going to draw eight of these. And you got seven. So you'll draw nine. Yeah. So, so you'll have one more of these than I do. Okay. So I should get nine. One, two, three, six. All right. I'm looking for that 20. Do I got to nope, save? No, I got a 20. Damn it. Um, and then we would resolve the loss movement, which there didn't end up being any bound. After all that binding, there is not a bound loss, is there? There's no bound loss. OK. Because that you would resolve first. OK, OK. Um, now. They are going to move towards the totem. Is it six? The closest totem. And they have to be able to see it. So it's the closest visible totem. Closest visible totem, but it's six, yeah. right? Yeah. So if we look here. Starting at the echo deck side. Yeah. Okay. So this lost can see both of our totems, not mine as much, but is definitely closer to yours. So it's going to move six inches towards this totem. It's going to be drawn to this totem, which is going to mean it's going to run right into. This guy. Okay. Is there a disadvantage for reaping if you're engaged in combat? You, you just can't, can't do it. Action. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so now this one. I'll take care of that. Uh, I don't know if it's closer to mine or if it's visible. So that's ten and a half. I think it's four. Uh, Scott, can you give me a true line of sight? Can this model see this? You can probably see this peak. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's going to move six inches. Although <laughs> it's going to. It's going to. Not move very far again. Um, oh, actually, I was very strategic in doing this. <laughs> There's a loss behind the rock. Though. This lost yeah. will move All uh, right into your reaper. Right, yes. uh, I think is it gonna? It's not gonna hit the reaper though. No. Okay. It's not gonna, and, and a loss won't get like sucked into engaging. Yeah, it's it. no gravity well no. or something like that. So it's gonna do that, and then this one will move closest to me, which is just gonna do that, 
And this one is again just going to. It doesn't. We got. They're both blocked pretty much. So, so you're this, actually smart by having your models there as bumpers. That was this one was intentional, but not not for that reason. I thought it would just run away from me toward. Yeah. Me. <laughs> but even though that it was supposed to go to me, yeah, it couldn't. Yes. Yeah. Dual purpose. Corral it towards you, but also stop <clears throat> if you get a T card. Sure. True. All right. All right. So I believe you get twenty and nineteen. Yeah. Uh, twenty seventeen is what I got because now we have some missing yeah, numbers. Missing ones. Right. Okay. Okay. Um. You know what? I I still want to have to. Oh, I, I want to get some lost on the board here, so I'm going to move this reaper there, and I'm going to try to reap that. Oh, lost. so my my dudes that have a D4 for reaping could get okay because of yep. okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But then they'll just disappear. So it's oh. a good end game move. So with uh, the reapers having the remain that. ability, yeah. Forget about that. But that's where I was saying like. A game is never over until it's over. There's been games where it looks like I'm about to get tabled and I have one model left and we're tied for lost and then I use it and then I remove the lost and then you know you win sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to try to bind. Uh, I got my D10 and I'm looking for a five. <laughs> and I get a one. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, so I failed really badly. Okay. I rolled a one. Okay. Which on a one, the lost will rebuff. Basically get some energy <laughs> charge and like... <laughs> Uh, hit back. Uh, you're gonna have to remind it. me how how to three roll. Three inches. It's just okay. Yeah. The same as so the basically, it's gonna like push me back three inches. Uh, okay. Like, okay. Probably just hit your lurker. Yeah, I like that. A mess of chains there. Yeah, I like that. When I was saying how there's like scenarios, with all different sorts of rules. Like there's there's versions of this where like your idols can get damaged and things like that. Yeah, and like there's ones where like the there's also scenarios where there's like a different loss type where they are weaponized and they can fight back. And yeah. yeah. So you went with your Reaper first, which was very wise. Because I was going to totally shriek at it and stun it for yeah. the round, but uh, now that doesn't have much much more value. But also I could. It means do. that he's probably not going to get a much reaping done this turn, so he's going to focus his attention on probably trying to kill you. It's very true. That's very true. So maybe I should stun instead something that has uh, aggressive potential. Maybe like this to save my Reaper yeah. or to save my. And uh, your Corruptor. Corruptor. Both with only one wound left and both engaged. So. Yes. Uh, if I. Hmm. Okay, I think instead of doing that, I think a more. Direct route would be. Well, I know it'd be the same thing because I think I'm just gonna walk up and hit it with the Slayer. Yep. Good move. Engage there. I have a, a positive modifier. I got yep. six inches of movement. Um, I don't really want to wrap around the back because uh, I want to be engaging those other scary dudes. So I'll just stay on this side of the model mm -hmm. with my Slayer. It's my 18. All right. My Slayer has uh, an attack modifier of four plus two for a total of six for the nearby Reaper. Oh, Ooh, and I got a five. I got a plus four here, but uh, twenty one. Yeah, right. losing by four. Uh, okay, so then my damage die on the Slayer is a D ten, and I'm just I, I'm just trying to beat whatever you roll for your. your yeah, head. and yep. so my mine is a D six. So if you roll above a six, I'm toast. Okay. Okay. Six. I gotta say, so I, I see I it. Let's see it, it dude. Oh! oh. There you go. Not cool. All right. All right. That was my go. Uh, that was a uh, eighteen. Yes. Okay. Um, I am again. I'm just gonna get very aggressive and again you were right. try. Uh, well, I'm gonna get aggressive as an eternal, not as uh, like models killing you. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to do the I'm same thing. Cataclysm. I'm gonna try to cataclysm again. Now there's it's... a lot. There's a higher chance this time and. Uh, same point of origin. It's yes. gonna a point perfectly around those three guys. That, oh yeah, fuck! I should have taken that ability. Um, that was, that's a great ability. So uh, I'm I have to hit a nine. I'm gonna get focus. plus. Well, I'm gonna focus. So I'm gonna get plus four, plus two. Okay. So here we go. On my D twelve. Uh, <laughs> this could be so bad. He's burning lots of tokens at the start of the turn, which means I do have a lot. You can energy. react yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, so what did I say there? I'm getting a plus six in total. Yes. I'm looking for a three, a three. on this. <laughs> no! There you go. No! <laughs> and that burns two tokens. Yeah. And that's Dude. that's. Love it. And then I have a fourteen. Power is still in the deck now because it wasn't Quality successfully game. manifested. I feel like I should use it, um, sure. just because I, there's an opportunity here. Oh, that's a great like. 
That's a good shot. That is a good shot, but also he's got two wounds. He's gonna die and he already went. So it's not like I'm taking an activation off the board by doing that. Yeah. Um, did you say quality game, Evan? I said quality gameplay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What can you do, what can you do? Uh, okay, is there any good stun objects? Is there any abilities that I want to take now that there is a plus two? I have the 15, so I only have one thing, and then you're gonna, do you have 14, 13? Yeah. Okay, so then I have one opportunity to do stuff here, so what should I do? I could fury and attack again with this person, trying to kill this guy, because he still hasn't yeah. gone with that person. And then you can just walk over and get that lost right by your totem. So I, I would love to be able to deal with that. I having to disengage or walk out and get hit. It feels so just straightforward. Just yeah, um, but I think I will because I have one activation. So to my with name. your with your slayer there, I do a furious hit. attack. Uh, so again, plus six modifier for the uh, hit roll. So twenty two. And I'm I have a four. A nineteen. You're also one dang pretty good dang walls also yeah. All right, now I do D6 ten again. All right, let's see what I can get this thing around. A four. Oh, oh, he's, oh, he's, he's toast. He dead. All right, two attempts, and we're That's outside time. Your reaper is my, free. My, my idols are falling, so it's like I'm going to have to like suit, like suit really start relying on eternal powers to make this Yeah, which is cool, because you yeah. still have some agency in the game yeah. even when your miles are dying. So that, that's, that's still pretty cool. also trying to now get more lost, yeah. because your opportunity to table My, my opportunity now. to table you is very low yeah. now. Yes, yes. You can't, hold on, I'm going to ask him to look. Can I, no, I cannot bind when I'm engaged. Okay. And the only thing that can bind is the Corruptor. Yeah. Okay. Unless, unless you do the ability. Left, I'd say just take the risk, walk away, and get the backlash. But we only have one wound left. Oh, right? yeah, you're right. Yeah. I totally would. I totally would. Again, the, with the plus two this round on the Power Manifest roll, uh, you it's, can try to empower another guy again. That's true. That's true. Freaking talking about extended version versus theatrical cut still. <laughs> now let me tell you about why the extended version of Lord of the Rings trilogy is better in an aspect ratio of 4-3. <laughs> <laughs> Love seeing all those sweeping landsa landscapes of uh, New Zealand in 4 by 3 Yeah. Chat, when talks about important things. I mean, you guys are totally right. Knockback, okay. Echo forming is creating terrain. I saw a fellowship in the theater in Germany. Did you? Oh, wow, very nice. Saw all three of those movies in theater with my ex girl. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Batman Begins in a theater in Iceland, and I nice. spilled a giant cup of Coca Cola over some poor middle aged man just trying to enjoy a movie. Aww. <laughs> Now you're not allowed in Iceland anymore. <laughs> no, that's for other reasons. That's the rule. Yeah. <laughs> Did you experience Iceland on a on a Friday night? Like, were you in Reykjavik? Yeah, I stayed in Reykjavik both and, times. Were you of drinking age at the time? Uh, yeah, but I don't really drink. Okay, but like, you didn't do like the bar crawl on that evening. Uh, no, we did. Can you, did you see all the broken glass and like the? When I was there, they had this tradition where they would uh, at the end of the night all walk out with their glasses from the pubs and smash them on the road. And then the next day it was all meticulously cleaned up. And when I asked my Icelandic friend, like, who cleaned up all that glass? He told me the little people did. The little people? Oh, yeah, elves. Yeah. And he wouldn't back down from it, so. What are guardian models? Okay. The, not in this game, not in okay. a standard game. But everything is an idol model, right? Except uh, for the lost. Except the lost, for the lost, lost, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, in terms of the idols, there's like a player model, enemy model. That distinction will come up in rules. Like, you know, if you're engaged with an enemy model, then so and so happens. But if something says all idols within, that's both yours and mine. Ash Storm is an amazing ability. Oh, we just made JP's day. He's for, like always bummed a, that no one uses it. For a five up, for everything to get a plus two. Like, if I had known this existed, I probably would have maybe even picked that for my very first activation, knowing that you were going to come out of the gate strong, because I have mostly low numbers, you know. Starting with that on, like, the 18 wouldn't have been a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. That's a very high value ability. Cool. What are you going to do? Is, Is it, it my turn? I think it's you. Oh, my God. I'm Am sorry. Am I wrong? Do you oh, not... my God. I've been waiting you for you to go. looking at your abilities going, I can't see do, your numbers do you not have here. a 15? I have a 12. Oh, I'm the asshole. <laughs> 
Okay. I, I, th I thought it was you. It's all right. I got to show a lot of the cool promo art while you guys were Oh, just wonderful. Nice. I'm glad that we get to show that. Hey, remember that time I did Cataclysm? <laughs> no, no. You can't do it again. Come on. I mean, I'm mad that, like, now it's uh, it's not even probably the best thing to do, but I'm going to no, do it, it out of spite. It, it's a good thing to do. I should force I should through a Cataclysm. So, so, again, I'm, I'm going to, like, yeah, he's, focus he's here. forcing it right now, for sure. Uh, and, again, I'm looking for a three. Oh, thank God. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Well, it worked. Yes. Now let's hope it is effective. <laughs> Where do we start? Where do we okay, start? we'll start with your corruptor. Corruptor. So I'm gonna roll, oh, and that is a 15. All right, and I am only a defense roll, right? Yeah. All right, so plus one, a two. <laughs> okay, so now my damage is a d8, and I think yours is a d8, or is it d10? Yep. D8. Whoa, big boy numbers. This is oh, I need an eight. Yeah! <laughs> So, yes! Um, there's a rule in this game that's written in the book somewhere where you haven't read it yet, where if we both roll eights, I still get it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. God dang. <laughs> uh, okay. That rule only exists in the fourth three edition of the game. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. your special copy. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's in the rule book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last page. Comes in a VHS book binding. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, now the Reaper. All right. Reaper, uh, eight. Reaper a little bit more tanky, right? No, he's not more tanky. He's plus one. Well, his, his, his oh, I, uh, okay. So, but his his uh, I rolled an eight. Okay. Um, but this part oh, you're D10. more tanky. Yeah. So it's a four. four. All right. What can I do with a D10? Not Great. good. Oh, the Reaper thanks. dies. Nice. No. Okay. My plan. <laughs> uh, and I still get to do that one more time on your Slayer. Yes. Uh, and that is a. Th 13. Mm -hmm. All right, Slayer is a plus three for defense rolls for an eight, so it goes off. And I rolled a five, and you only have a d4, so that is Ooh. dead. Okay, that's what Cataclysm does. That's what it should do, yes. That's what it does. Okay, okay. Okay, I have an eight, so when it hits eight, Okay, that's my so turn, I have so. the next three activations to go here. So, let's see, maybe attack, wound, bind, and then, oh, but then I can't reap it with anything. There's nothing nearby. Um, that thing over there, that's doable. Okay. Um, and then you have the two candles, the corruptor, and other stuff. So they haven't gone yet. Okay. Um, I think what I'll try to do here is there's there was a spell that I could use or a eternal power. Yep. yep. Um, I say spell all the time. Yes. That <laughs> that you can target terrain and it does damage to them as well. Yep. Yep. Uh, um, so, no, like, there's one that, like, does damage to ones in terrain. Is that the one you're thinking of? Yeah. That's yeah. Like Collapse? Actually. Yeah. So, basically... A yeah. easier to get off yeah. as well? So, so, select a terrain piece within... Uh, so, and you are, you have your totem, which is close enough. Or, or this that thing, one. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you would obviously select this terrain piece. Yeah, yeah. So, let's... I, first, let's, see if you get it. Let's, right? Yeah, let, let's, let's, let's try it out. So, I have a 12 and a plus 2. I need a 6. So, on a d12, it's a half and half, right? Yeah. Was yeah. something else I needed to remember? No, no. I was just going to say the thing about Collapse is good is that even if you don't hurt them, they do become stunned if you hit them. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah. Or, okay. or, or just period, yeah. Okay, nice. If the spell goes off. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So at least there's some effect on a success. So the question is, is do I want to use a bonus thing? I don't think so. Okay, if I wanted to bind something, that is a 9-inch range? Yep. Okay. I like that someone mentioned the the app about going out with your. I'm gonna say going out with your cousin in Iceland. Because <laughs> oh yes, yes, what, what, yeah. What, when I went there, uh, it was a while ago, and the book or the app didn't exist, and it was actually just a book at City Hall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna risk it again because that's worked out for me. Okay, so you're you're focusing. I'm not focusing. Or you're not focusing. I'm gonna use just my twelve on collapse, um, and I get a plus two. That's it. Yeah. On a. There you I got go. it. All oh, right. That's a D10, though. That's the only problem. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, okay. Should I do it again? Okay. I mean, you hit it on a harder die, there but it go. doesn't count. Whatever works. Yeah. Happy to roll it again. Nope. There you go. Seven. 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 Oh, yeah. not a one. Okay. Seven. 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 Yeah. Nice. Okay. So collapse goes off. Yep. Happens. Uh, hits this piece of terrain, and it does uh, six damage. No. Well, you get to do the same thing. So you now you're going to resolve an attack. Okay. Oh, okay. So okay. You're, you're rolling with a plus five. Plus five. Okay. So All if right. you want to do my, like, say, the Reaper first. The Reaper first. Yeah. Why not? The D20, so I'm at an 18. And I only have a plus one. We get uh, sorry, plus here. three because I'm in the train. Yep. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, so what did you roll? I got an 18. Oh, that's a 16. Okay. So it hits. So now you can resolve the damage. The damage die is a d6 right. versus my d10. Right. Got a fiver. Seven. Seven. That's a seven, right? Yeah. <laughs> so no matter what, it's stunned, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter so much on him, but right. the other guy it will. Right, okay. I'll just take it off for now. I'm going to clean up easier later. All right. My next guy, plus five modifier. So a 20. 20. And what is that? That's a lurker there. I got a plus four. 19. Ooh, ooh, close. Okay. Uh, and he's it. dead. Because I got a D4. D4. All right. So as you can see, like this turn is starting to move a lot faster yeah, than the first turn. For sure, yeah. Like it definitely like accelerates. Yeah. All right. I think uh, so that, that was lucky. I, awesome. I did the 12 just for that. For the 10, we'll do this guy to swing on that person. So that's a three candle boy. So that's a stalker. Stalker against stalker. Stalker on Stalker action. So mm -hmm. I have a plus two. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> have you seen Stalker, Tarkovsky Stalker? No. Oh, no, okay. I have the double VHS. Uh, I bet you do. <laughs> but I have yet to build up the, I don't know, confidence to watch it yeah, and yeah. not be just I haven't destroyed. Seen it. I haven't seen it either. Yeah, my, my yeah, buddy watched that's it. That's a mood. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got to be in the mood for like that. Like Stalker and Threads are two movies. I'm at a plus four net, so 11. And I'm at a... Uh, eight, I only got nine, 10, 11, 12, right? I'm 12. at 12, yeah. All right, so you're good. Um, man, okay, so what should I do now? My plan was to kill that guy and then bind the one across next to my other guy, but I can't do that. So maybe what I should do is disengage because I'm investing in a future turn here. So mm -hmm. when I disengage, is that a three inch move? Is that a two inch move? Yeah, you disengage with three inches away from the model. Okay. Yeah. And then you can still take a move if you want. Can I walk through him if I can get over an inch away or no? You have to end your disengage move out of engaged range. So using that three inches, you have to make sure you end your three inches out of engaged range with that model or any enemy model. For I don't that think matter. I can do that if I go through you. Something like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes that. And then I'll go. And then you can now use your movement. This as long way. as you don't walk into engaged while you're walking. Oh, so, so <laughs> yeah. that matters. It's not yeah. where you start, where you end. Yeah. The, the route also. Exactly, okay. yeah. Okay. That was really inspired by sort of attacks of opportunity from D&D &D combat. Is really yeah. okay. there. Yeah, okay. All right, so that was a disengage and a move with my... Don't forget your wound. Oh, I did. The yeah. wound move. That was strategic, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> if I miss it, then it's too bad, <laughs> Exactly, right? yeah. I got a six for my next one. Okay, I, I have an eight and a um, seven here. So... Uh, I, I really got to find a way to get some... Get some souls. So get some lost here, which is. Or yeah, some lost. Yeah. Uh, you know, what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to bind this lost with this uh, corruptor. Um, that is my D8. Four. Blowing minds in chat right now, guys. Seven. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So I have well, found well, finally well, I bound a lost. So if you can pass me one of those eyeballs, and I'm the gold player, so this lost is bound to me. Ooh, nice. Uh, and then I have a seven. Um, while you're thinking, we have two more subs from HUD saying, Siri, play I Want to Be Sedated by the Ramones. I'm not sure what it's a reference to, but uh, I haven't even heard that, ever heard a song before. I'm not a huge but Ramones listener. I want to be sedated. Be sedated. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah you definitely. I used to kind of think you used to know the title too, you know? You just heard it a million times. Yeah, it's uh, only the, the chorus of yeah. the most famous Ramones song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like For 50 sure. different trailers. For sure. All right, Hud, thanks for the sub. And also, Coronary Jump says, hey, hey, Coronary Jump, what's up? Um, someone, uh, James, is excited for Owls of Torment in the chat. And also, someone said, yo, Scott, down near Chicago early for Adepticon, just got back from Canes. Nice. All right, hope you enjoyed it. All right, with my seven, I'm going to try to uh, do a Cosmic Blast um, through my Corruptor. And this is a single target damage ability. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But first, I have to do it. Uh, and I'm... I need a. I need to hit a six on the die to do it. Bingo. Two. Okay, so I will now uh, resolve an attack power. It's going to be against this, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to roll a. Yep. Uh, well, I have to. Yeah, I have to roll d20 plus five. So that's eight, uh, 13. Now you can roll your defense of this. Okay. And that this is, is a, a d20. I don't know what the modifier is. Okay. Like 11, 12. What did I get? I actually can't remember. Rewind. Eight, Rewind. nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. What okay. did you get? Uh, twelve. Nine, <laughs> plus three, nine, nine, nine four. Twelve. Well, how many candles? Three, four, four. So a thirteen then. Yeah. Okay. You so you defend. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nine plus four. Yep. All right. Um, and then do you have? I have those? a three. Is my next one. Okay. 
So then I'm going to go with the next two, six and five. Um, so I attack there, attack there, can't do anything there. And I have, I could, I could, uh, I could just go for the reap, right? Or they're a d4. No, they're, they're... For you, right? They're uh It's possible, yeah. Oh, it's a d6. These yeah. guys are a d6. Yep. Um, and with your, you have a, he has a plus one ability, a plus yeah. one. Yeah, dude, let's go for so it. So you Why have not? a good, actually, like a much yeah. better than normal chance to do this. got to say impending doom in the voice. Okay. <laughs> impending doom. There you go. <laughs> All right, I'll go for it. Uh, so I have d6, and I'm a, a natural plus one because of the hollow's faction ability. All right, so I need a four then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. So oh. that loss is gone. Um, also, then your, your oh, stalker oh, disappears I into the that. void. I forgot that, yeah. Rip. So does that count toward being tabled? Yes. Yes. So, so it becomes, yeah. Okay. So if, say if you have one model left and you and you have like, say, does it end if you get to five or does that, does that not matter at all? No, uh, this five is, no, that's just, so the, one, there can be a different number of lost on the board per game. Like you actually roll at the beginning to see, we just okay. skipped that. Okay. okay. Um, but the, the game just ends when there's no more lost on the board okay. or one uh, person has no has models no left. Okay. And then it's kind of like, then or you assess, the phase out. or the phase out, right? So uh, you can definitely, well, I guess that is an interesting thing. If he has, if he has. Oh, no, you can't table yourself by doing a final, because then you would table yourself. Yeah, like yeah. that's the thing. So if you, yeah. if you have more loss than me, and you're down to one model, and you took a soul and it went off the table, you would end up allowing me to win by tabling yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Which I think was what the question actually yeah. boils down to, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, essentially. Um, so with the last one, I could risk it for the biscuit and just go for rolling a four on a d4 to uh, reap this other soul uh, over here with yeah. uh, my corruptor. And, but you, uh, that, that's your uh, lurker, 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 lurker. And yeah. you have that plus one. I do have that plus one, so it is, uh, it is possible, but... Yeah, you have to get a uh, four. Yeah. I wouldn't do that yet because you still. Oh, right, because I lose it. I lose it. You yeah. lose it. And you still, right now, you guys both have four models left. So but you have a, a big tabled. advantage on loss. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, you're right. I'm in a little bit of a uh, tenuous situation here. So you only have one activation left. So I'm trying to think, like, what are you, what are you going to do? What's the number on it? Uh, three. Three. Okay, so I'm going to have one thing to go. It looks like it's that lurk over there that he, yeah. So I think what I'll do is since this is bound to you, there's no point in standing next to it. Yep. So I will walk over here and I will try to shriek at someone. If I shriek at this guy, he can't walk in and get a, and get a plus modifier in combat. So he'll only be able to hit me with the, the flat up uh, lurker on lurker action. Yep. If I do that guy, then he can walk in and a stun person still gives you a combat bonus? Yep. All right, I'm gonna shriek this guy then. Yep, exactly. All right, um, okay, so uh, this is the lurker and I'm at a plus three. And I am at a plus four. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Oh. For being in uh, train. Train, yeah. Plus two. Yeah. Uh, so, 17. All right. You're good. Absorbs. You are good, sir. Uh, so. Do you have a four? Nope. I got a two and a one. So, I have a three. What can I do with a three? So all you. What can What's I the current do? score, by the way? Uh, the current score is two to two, two to oh. In favor of me so far. So, does the bind stay for the rest of the game? Yes. Yep. Un okay. Until like, can you unbind? Well, yeah. until the model that bound it dies. Oh. So if so, there's a couple things. If I reap it, it's gone. If this model dies, that goes away. Yeah. You can also attempt to bind this, basically like reset it to you. Okay, it's okay. a little bit harder because it's already bound. Is that like a minus two? Uh, you have to roll a six. Okay. So normally you roll a four to bind. You okay. got to get a six if you're so just yeah, to two. bind. Two, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, not a minus two. It'd obviously, be plus two to make a harder roll. Yeah. Um, nice games. Hmm. There's a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of math. <laughs> I played Warmer Fantasy. I know all about spreadsheets and math. <laughs> but we didn't want that that math to be in the game. No, <laughs> yeah. just in the like DNA. Yeah. Just determining like what models should have what modifiers and things. And yes. Like yes. That's good. Okay. Uh, I will. This is not activated. I will take a ranged attack against your corruptor. And you can do that in combat? Uh, I'm not in combat. I'm engaged oh, with a loss. loss. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So I'll um, allow it. <laughs> I am a... Two candles? Two candles. Uh, a four candle, that's a lurker. Oh. Yours is a corruptor. Two. I'm a, I'm a plus three. I'm a plus two for my defense. 
Oh, got it. You got it. Okay. That's all you, buddy. Okay. Um, I could... Something to consider the round will end when all models are activated or if all tokens are used, whatever happens first. So if you have a model that you haven't activated yet... Um, I have a model that's not activated that I can't. So you, you, you can't won't be able to end the turn by activating models. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Okay. Sneaky. Sneaky, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if I should use... You did Cosmic Blast and it went off, right? Yes, it's out of commission. Okay, and so is the other. And so is Cataclysm. The other bigger boom. Okay, the, yeah, Cataclysm. So I'm not sure. What is Hell to do? Uh, you just you, you can't move. Can't, can't move. move. Okay, yeah. okay. Which if you do it on an activated model is sort of pointless. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's keep it simple. I'm going to no. Already swung with that lurker. I can't swing again. Um. I'm going to attempt to uh, kill the person who bound uh, that lost soul. So it's this one. So I'll go here and perform a range attack on that there you person. Go. So that has a, model has two wounds? It does have two wounds. Oh, okay, yeah. so it's not going to die. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, it wouldn't die instantly. That's your Tormentor. Or, 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 or Corruptor, yeah. <laughs> God, Another okay. Metabland. Yeah. You know, <laughs> hey, it does the bind action, and originally it was called the Binder, which makes sense. Okay. But, you know, it's like a fucking <laughs> it Binder. Three ring binder. binder. <laughs> it was never called the Binder. That's what the playtesters called it. They called it the Binder. Okay. Like, yeah. I don't know. It was a hard thing to break. It's the well, Duotang. Yeah. Right? Like, like, okay. Oh, gosh, that's amazing. I forgot that we didn't actually say no, that. They no, did that. They did. They <laughs> came up with it. So what is the uh, oh, the stalker ability has a thing called enduring? Just really good at getting into combat and staying alive, essentially. Okay. But getting into combat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, hard, to, so hard to hurt. You bound that guy, and so your plans are going to be to walk up and reap it. And so I'm going to make that Engage harder. As Reaper. Exactly. Absolutely. Right? Reaper and also what's going to happen is this is not an ideal thing for me where my Reaper and my Corruptor are on opposite sides because this will move towards the model that's binding it. So it's actually going to move away from my Reaper as well. So it's, it's not perfect for me anyway. I think the problem is that I don't think I can necessarily get within. Oh, no, I can. Okay. If the Which seven's on you. Uh, looking at? Uh, this one. If, if the seven's on him, that means that I'm an inch away from him. That, that that's one activated already, though? Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. I shot yeah, with yeah. it. Didn't I? Wait, yeah, you I did. shoot with it? You must have. Yeah. yeah, you did. No, I actually just put... No, the... you just put that there right oh, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to shoot yeah, yeah. at this, but then I decided not to because it's too high in wounds. All right, so I got to move a six. Now it's engaged. Now it is engaged. All right, and then I might as well make a swing on it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um... It's not necessarily better to make a ranged attack with this person, is it? Well, it is if you want to just stay out of combat. Well, yes. Or sometimes that, you have an order ability that's really One cool. thing to keep in mind is that if you do a ranged attack, I'm in terrain, so I will be obscured. But if we're in melee, uh, I don't get that oh, advantage. Oh, okay. That's very nice. Okay, cool. Very cool. Four candles. All right. Plus three. And I'm just a plus one. That's Cox? a cocked. Yeah, that's cocked. Ooh, oh. 13. Yes. Oh, so nat 20 is auto block? Nope, it isn't. No, it's not right. So I'm at 20 plus, so I'm 21. What are you? We're tied. We're tied. 21. 21. Okay, so I still made it. Okay, okay. I don't mind though. It's good to get that, that guy engaged, make it a little bit difficult to reap. And then I think I think I have all my models activated. So whatever I do is going to need to be one of these things. And do you have a recommendation for me based on the board state? And I have one token left. Um, I think trying to keep your corruptor alive uh, is going to be helpful. Okay. Um, how would I do that? There's, uh, uh, if, if you were to morph it away against something that, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Not a lot of good options, man. You could like, yeah, try to recall it, but it's still. Can I put a piece of terrain like yes, right 100%. here? Yes, yeah, You could try to do that. Uh, so if you're looking for uh, like echo, echo form, echo form, which is not one of the super hard ones to do. Yeah, not too bad. All right. So we'll echo form for us ability yeah. to create a piece of terrain. So his stalker could then maybe chase you around, but at least it's our. It's not easy, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do that. So yeah, you could do that, or put one here to try to block me even further. Oh, like, there's like, yeah, the but that's probably the best. All right, let's try this. So I need a oh, d20 or 12, sorry. Yep. This? Yep. Yeah. Okay. God damn it. I never played RPGs growing up, or I don't really do it. A I lot. still figure it. So I struggle it. with the yeah. dice. Yeah. Uh, and out. the and you struggle with the box too. Yes. You got it. Is that in? That is. I needed a six. It's plus two, so a ten goes off. And I get to make a piece of so terrain. So now, yeah. So a footprint of four inches or less, which this one yep. conveniently is. Perfect. And you can place that anywhere it can fit. Within range? Within reach? With, oh, yeah. Within reach of... of but but his, yeah, his beacon is right there, so he's good. All right. 
we'll try to make it a little bit more challenging. This guy can move through terrain with impunity, so uh, yeah, I'll make it block line of sight yeah. at least a little bit. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, and that was uh, my last activation. And, that, and that's the end of round two. Perfect. So I think round three is going to maybe seal some of our face. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Hello, Andre. Binders full. Binders full of women. What the heck? Is that a, is that a quote or something? That's a political yeah, joke. Uh, reference to Mitt Romney's gaffe. Okay. Run. Okay. And there's oh, one more token by your lurker. Oh, there's actually two. I got binders full of Pokemon. Let's see if I can see any from my angle. This is a definitely a two person job. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing any. All right. All so, right. answer me start round three. Let us see. So three extra tokens. The lofts are going to move nine inches away from people, and we have a plus one when doing our eternal powers. Neat. All right. All right. So, uh, well, we'll draw our tokens. So yep. you are. What we do I got? Four models, right? We each have four. Yep. So we each get five of these. Excellent. Well, plus three. Oh, sorry. Not plus one. Plus three. Five. Seven. I told you I was bad at math. <laughs> I was just looking at the wrong number. I swear. Um, we also playtested this game as Gothic Scrabble. <laughs> Code name. All right, what do we get? What do we get? Show me some high numbers. 17 is my. All right, I think you're going to beat me. I, my highest is a 16. 16, 13, 9, 8, 4, 3, 1. All right. Okay, so first we'll bound lost to move. Yeah, we'll resolve the lost, yes. uh, which is so bound lost move first, and they always move directly towards the model. They're bound to three inches. They go face to face, yeah. It's got a nine inches. Which should be. Well, it's see, they, it, move three it, it's, they they're just bound. move three. They're like in a. Oh, they're in a. Like a trance. They're in a fugue state. Ah, fugue state. All right. And then I think there's one over one here, and this is actually going to become very relevant for helping you win. Um, Good, I like that. I like yeah, hearing see, like this. Because this one's going to move, well, no, it's not quite off the board yet, I guess. It's going to move this way. I thought it was going to move that way more, but it's actually more like... It's <laughs> Zambi said, you think they'd make math easier for games, considering most of us are bad at it? <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like the guys made math more of a thing built into the engine, yeah. a thing you have to consider. Yeah. Uh, mostly just like, listen, plus two, minus two. I'm bad at adding... Uh, what was it? Four to three. <laughs> and if you're bad at that, there's no game that's going to save you. <laughs> unless it has no numbers. Have your hungry hippos. I'm yeah, really good yes. at hungry. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that was one. Now this one, we got to figure out this one. Oh, yeah. Which I, I would think is him. I think it's him. I think, I think he's off the board. this yeah. is off the board. Yeah. Which, you know, actually puts you one step closer to victory because that's one less thing I can use to try to catch up. I forget. So the, the the game also ends when all the souls are gone. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because this, this is good for me. That's then. very good for you. Um, and you can. I will say he would have clipped this base a little bit. No, not matter? even even if we were playing with like non dynamic lost, it's so clear like okay. he would run off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then is there only there's two here? No, that's me. So it's only this one. Yeah. Yeesh. Which I feel like is this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I can I get that, this one. Yeah. This. That's like a, that's a really bad loss movement for me. Yeah, like that takes away a so, lot of my chances. It's going so far too. Yeah. Dang. Also, that it's a nine, right? Yeah, that was a nine. Yeah. Okay. Expect to be hit with lots of eternal powers. I know. Yeah. To enable you. Uh, and what did you have as your high? My high is sixteen. So I got a seventeen. Um, I'm engaged there, right? Yeah, you're engaged here and here. Hmm. We got a plus one on that. It's like... Game math is always hard, no matter how simple. Yeah, I think it's because you're trying to You're make... trying to do it on the spot while people are like, yeah. and you're trying to think of a lot of different things at once. Yeah, and... you know, in this case, we're live streaming and trying to be engaging and interesting and also doing math. I mean, I'm not trying, I just am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Boom. relax. We're live streaming? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> Should we be naked right now? No, we shouldn't. We're matching all of you people as naked. That's how it works, right? It makes you less nervous. I'm just imagining Scott naked. Okay, relax. Settle down. That makes two of us. Beat. 
<laughs> you don't have to imagine. He was naked before the I know. stream. I was shirtless. Yeah. He was like, I got to my love, and he stripped yeah. down completely naked. I, I care so much about the production value of the stream chat that I tape things to my hairless chest. You know, it doesn't matter. There's no hair to remove it. God damn, what did you hear? This is tough. I mean, it all got removed the first time, and it's never going to grow back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're like, I, I spent 18 years growing this. <laughs> I, 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 at this point, I have, have like to work towards table. I have like six hairs, and that's it, pretty much. Um, I'm going to take Stalker, or sorry, uh, yeah, Stalker versus Stalker. Stalker be Stalker. All right, I have a defense. Oh, so this, this is actually this good is, for is, me. Yeah, that's a better matchup for the defender in this case. Yeah. And, and with a oh, one. You well, I got a one, too. Oh, shit. Well, you still win. Still okay, <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Wait a second. There's no critical <laughs> fails. No, 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 no. But I, that, that. Like, could we somehow get a Wait. backlash when we both roll a one? I get to hit him, right? Oh, so he, no, because that's a five. Oh, I need a five. And, and, and I'm, you're a five, and I'm a three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so but, like, so that would... Six-minute abs. Yeah. Six-minute abs. <laughs> Wait, what? Right. I don't know. Okay. Says, there's something about Mary Riffle. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm now... Aging, I'm aging myself. Okay, are you? <laughs> yeah, I... I'm also notorious for like totally missing. He references. misses movie references. Yeah, yeah, that's like part of his brand. That's my shtick. Seen like eight movies. I've seen like at least eight, maybe nine. Um, the problem is you've seen them in widescreen. <laughs> They're much easier to remember. This is like an inside joke that nobody like. <laughs> you guys weren't there for lunch, so these jokes about aspect ratios. I just yelled at an iPad. I just said it to the iPad instead <laughs> of the camera. <laughs> You're like a professional YouTuber. You're talking to the yeah. camera all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Is this thing on? Uh, I could stun the Reaper, but the Reaper is effectively stunned. I'm uh, effectively stunned. He's, yeah. He can't really do much. So the other question is, is I always like to ask the question, is like, what are you going to try to do? Um, maybe you're going to range attack this person at an advantage, so maybe it'd be wise to maybe disengage or run away. I would say if you can keep your corruptor safe and out of uh, range of, say, him dropping Cataclysm on stuff, because he can drop Cataclysm from basically these models, so, you know, moving to that, mm. moving your models to that side of the board, uh, binding a loss, even, yeah. if, even if you're not reaping it this round, it's in terrain. him from reaping it. That's yep. true. Yeah. I will, I'll walk in terrain until three inches of movement. Yeah. I have my move. A little and bit I put Astrum on that guy. He's now got a plus four. Oh, nice. Wait, so what about, what about Astro, you said? Oh, Ash Storm. Storm the, you uh, could oh, use Ash Storm. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And... Plus two for being in terrain, and then another plus two for the Ash Storm. Wouldn't be a bad idea, honestly. Um, okay, so my 16 token is walking in, and then I will attempt to bind that loss there. Um, and then remind me how binding works. So you just have to see it. It's got to be nine inches away, and then you roll Good. four up. Okay, four Using up. your corruption die. My corruption die, okay. Cool, and this is a... Corruptor. Corruptor, and so I have... D8. D8. Excellent. And this is... It's the D8. one that's less than that. This one, yeah. yes. All right. That's a one. Not, 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 not bound. All right, year ago. I, I have a, a 13. Okay. Um, <laughs> Rufus says, "All right, Jeremy, you can stop going easy on the new guy now." <laughs> I think it's still, I think it's still kind of anyone's game because yeah. if he just kills me, then I just lose, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm killable. I think that's kind of the thing with the D twenty system in general is that there's always going to be like the the swingy D twenty dice right? nature. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of, you know, you sign up for that when you play a game that has a system like this. It's going to be on Scott's uh, gravestone. Is uh, I'm killable. <laughs> That's his epitaph. I'm very killable. <laughs> we got there, plus one. into it, like the, uh, the eternal powers kind of can be used as a lot of different tools. Whether yes. Whether it can be offensive or defensive. I think I'm... Depending on your role and what you're trying to do in the game. I think I'm definitely not f fully taking advantage of the uh, eternal powers. That's mostly because I'm uh, I haven't read all. You don't of them. know what they'll do, right? Yeah, right? yeah. I know what that does. I know what this. Does. Okay, so I mean, it's not like exciting because we've been here before, but I'm am gonna have to try the cataclysm. Oh, blinding light all over again, Evan. <laughs> and I am going to empower or er, to focus it, so I will get a plus five on my roll, okay. four and one. And where are we targeting? Um, we are using this guy, this beacon to target here. Nine inches. Are you cheating? Yeah. No, no, it's like <laughs> easily nine inches. Easily. Like that's nine inches exactly. Like, Do you have to see the spot that you're uh, targeting? Uh, no, uh, it, no, actually, it's a point. It's a point. So okay. I, yeah, um, and I, I would argue that I could see it either way. So a point here. So let's first try to 
make it successful. Does it hit both guys? That's that my. I'm aiming it to be within three inches of both of these. Very nice. Okay. So I am. It's a nine, and I got four. I'm looking for a five. And it's a nine. Got it. All right. So now I'm going to resolve the attacks. Uh, so we'll do your corruptor first, but you have a whole bunch of stuff that's happening, right? Like, so you have. Um, just plus you get, two. Or just plus, you didn't do Ashstorm, but you get plus two, whatever, plus your... Okay, so Corruptor has a uh, value of a plus one for his defense. And your plus three there. Plus three. Oh, good. Um, so that is a... Um, that's a 21 for yeah, me. 11. Yeah, 11 on me. Okay, so now the damage die is a D8. D8. For me oh, as well. Yes. Ha -ha! Uh, and, that, and that's your second wound, right? Yes, so that would take uh, it out. So he's dead. Uh, now we can resolve your the attack on your worker there, uh, and I that's a big number. That's a big number. Twenty three. Twenty two. Uh, I do not get high enough. Okay, and now the damage is an eight. Uh, can okay. you beat that? I don't think you can. That is what oh. Cataclysm does. Cataclysm shredding through ghosts right now. Uh, then I have an eleven. I have a thirteen. Um, so I will go. And this is, this is just not a fun combat to engage in here. Okay, so I have two people left. So uh, this is problematic. Um, like basically now at this point, it's like you want to keep those two alive. Yeah. 100%. Right? Yeah. So the question is, is, do I... So maybe what I can do to make my life a little bit easier... <sighs> that guy, he went... Oh, no, you used a divine power, didn't you? Uh, yes, I just worked through him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe what I'll do, uh, I have thirteen. What's your next one? No, I have nine. Uh, Eleven. Next. Eleven. So you're going next. I could still uh, deliver eternal powers from your totem. That's the last. Oh yes, you can. Us. Yeah. That's true. So everything you measure now from your deck will be from that hand. Talk okay. Water. Okay. Okay. Um, I will with thirteen attempt to blast um, cataclysm. Can't do cataclysm. No, no, not, not that one. Not that uh, one. Shot, uh, Cosmic Blast? Cosmic Blast, yes. I'll try to Cosmic Blast this homie from my totem. Definitely. Um, yep. And I'm at a plus one, though. Yeesh. I want it to go now, because I feel like that is risking my lurker over there. Am I concerned about your uh, Reaper hurting my guy? Not a whole no, lot. No, but what you should be concerned about is my three beacons here and Cosmic Blast and my upcoming focus. Yeah. So... This is where it comes into, uh, do you want to like use an eternal power just so I can't, but also gain some... You also have a chance to hurt something, so... Yeah. Yeah. I think that... But you shouldn't do that. I, th I, I think that's an okay play. Another okay play is just moving away from your totems, you know? Um, or, yeah. Just like yeah, taking getting this guy out of... and... But then I have to disengage. That's not good. I don't want to do that, because then you're going to do that. Yeah, I will uh, Cosmic Blast from here to here, but no no focus, unfortunately. So, it try, go off. so you're looking for an eight? Yeah. I'm looking for a seven, I believe. Yeah, correct. On a D12. Yep. Which is this one. Yes. All right, here we go. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. It worked. <laughs> so that, it, like, whether or not you hurt me, that takes it out of my toolbox. Very nice. All right, so we're at a plus five advantage here because I'm operating 15. as the the eternal. Um, yeah, so you're 15 and I am, uh, what am I there? I'm forgetting already. Lurker. I'm a lurker, so I'm a plus two on this. <laughs> That's another plus two for being obscured. obscured. So I'm actually 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. What did you get? 15? I got 15. So I, I, I'm good. All right, very nice. And what do you got there? I got nine. Okay, so I got this. Um, so I unfortunately can't now do the exact thing I wanted to do. Uh, there's another way I could damage you because you're. Uh, you're touching this terrain, so I could try collapse. But the problem with collapse, are you touching that? No, not touching He's not. The problem with collapse is it's all idle models. So I'd hurt myself oh, in the process. Oh, OK. Uh, what else do we have here that can? I don't think there actually are any. Oh, oh I know what I'm going to. Uh, this power uh, 15 inches. We, this should be. Definitely within. Can't feet. be engaged. Can't be engaged. You know what I'm trying to do? Yeah. I was gonna try recall and bring this, but I forgot that I'm. Yeah. I'm oh, that's engaged. nice actually. Yeah. Okay. No, having that model engaged is. Oh, yeah. I am. 
going to use my re uh, Reaper to take the disengage action. Um, and three inches, correct? Yep. That was his action. Can you sh uh, do a, an action and then move? Yeah, you can yeah. do an action and move or vice versa. So right. now I just did my action of disengage, and now I'm going to move. Okay. Right here. But he has been activated, so I can't uh, okay. try to reap with him. Wunderbar. Um, and... I suppose I will take a ranged attack against your uh, stalker there. And you have an advantage because I'm engaged. Nope. That's only a combat advantage. For, oh, only uh, melee. melee. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. My stalker. Actually, has a... you have an advantage because you're engaged, which means you're obscured. So it's like yeah. being oh! in terrain. So you have a plus two. So I'm actually plus six because of uh, my yeah. natural plus four. All right. Oh, Twenty-five. <laughs> Nope. Backlash. No, there's no oh, that's backlash. A shot. That's a shot. That's a range I'll take attack. it though. I, mean, <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was maybe your stock. No, uh, but I have a seven. What was your next one? Uh, nine. Okay, that's you. Okay, uh, I'm going to be a cheeky bastard. Uh, I'm going to range shot at yeah. this person. Um, what? <laughs> um, yep. And this is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I have a combat uh, a value of plus three for my uh, range shot. So I'm going to shoot your dude over there. I got a 21 when all is said and done. Um, so I'm also engaged, so I'll get my plus two. two um, plus how much? I think I zero for five voice. Oh, no, one, one, one. One, one. so I get yeah. plus three. Okay. Nope, and I, that will not do it. Okay, so then my damage die for my... Uh, uh, with lurker? your lurker, yeah, is a D4. Four. I guess you do this mostly for the stunning, not so much for the, uh, uh, for the damage. Not, I got a D10 here. Uh, four. All right, so I'm good. You're good. And then for my action, what I will do is I will try to skirt the Five, edge of six, this thing. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And just end up right there. All right, my next one is an eight. So I will So I have go, a seven. Um, I'm going to... Um, you said... Uh, did you do the terrain exploding one? Nope. Okay, I'm going to... Honestly, I should have spent eight and nine on both his abilities, but that's okay. I'll do eight on... You're looking for collapse, probably? Collapse, yes. And then three and four. All right. I'm going to do collapse on this piece of terrain yeah. from this totem. And it's an eight, so I need a seven with my plus one for the round. On a... A12? Yep. Okay. <laughs> We go. got it, damn. I'm getting lucky, honestly. Um, okay, and then this is uh, at a plus five combat advantage. 14. That is. And, I'm, and that, what have I got in there? Is that a lurker? A lurker. Uh, so I got a plus two, plus two. Yeah. So I'm plus four on this. Nope. Seven. Okay, so Good. it goes off, and it's uh, how much damage? Uh, it'll be on the card at the bottom. A D6. Versus Six. my D4, so if you roll. Three. Oh, oh, it's beatable. Beatable. Oh. Ah, very nice. Tied. All right, that was so my... That was your eight? That was my eight. I have a, a four, three, one. Okay. Um, I will... That's your activation there, right? Nope. That's, or is that mine? Yep. Did I? You, we, did, we did Lurker on Lurker. Okay, that's one, right. One of your first so those ones. are both there. Yep. What do I have? I have this Corruptor. <clears throat> Okay. There's one thing I'm. Oh, you already. Was this this turn? No, that was last turn. That was last turn? Yeah. Okay, I am going to try to do an echo form. Mm. Uh, so I need a five. Nope. I did not get it. So I won't tell you what my cool plan was. <laughs> um, I have th uh, four and three. And, and so I have a two. So. Um, so we've done the Cataclysm, we've done... Uh, cosmic Blast, cosmic Cataclysm, blast. and you did Collapse. And Collapse happened. Is there some other way that I can damage this person from this totem? Uh, Probably sure. not, right? Those are the three damaging powers. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think what I will do then is I will... This, this is... I don't need to Ash Storm right now, it's useless. 
your stalker hasn't been activated. That'll be, I guess, your last token right there. Shut the round. That's out. what I'm thinking. I, I'll, I'll do an ability with advantage right now. Um, you know that he's trying to do something with Echo Form. Try to steal that. Yeah. But you could also like deny me the chance to use this too, right? Like you can end the round. Okay. Oh, or no, I... you can't because I have an unactivated. Oh, oh, so oh that's a good point. Um. Hmm. I don't know what's. I don't know if there's a great spell to use right now. I don't know what you're gonna do. I'm gonna pretend like you. I didn't know you were gonna echo form because that feels a little lame. And just to play a little defensively, I'll spend this and I'll focus and I'll do Ash Storm to protect my last dude who still has to go. Because I'm not really sure what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, yeah, I'll do that. And so that's a D12 and I'm at a plus two. Uh, plus, one. plus one. Yeah. yeah. But for focusing, it's plus. Oh, oh, oh you, plus so you get plus four, so plus oh, one, so or plus it, five. It goes off automatically. Yeah. yeah. So everything is a, at a plus two right now. For Ash Storm. Uh, yeah, it's three inches around that beacon. So oh, basically, it's only. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So, oh, so yeah. actually, it wouldn't even be. So that in was it. largely it useless. So. Okay. We can rewind that here. Right. Right. I thought it was everything in the game for whatever oh, reason. No. I don't know why. Um, that would be very strong. <laughs> I know. I'm at five up. I was like, holy shit. Um, is it also around your other beacon as well? No, it's whatever the one you used. Oh, I'm not sure what I should do. I, I mean, like the only thing that seems to have really any value is making terrain, um, or uh, removing terrain. Hmm. Uh, recall, recall that person closer to your totem. But again, you, there's still two enemies over there. So yeah, no, I, I have that's not yeah. there for a specific reason. I don't think there's anything really valuable to do. So I, I will steal your spell, Jeremy. Okay. Um, and that was the. You can certainly try. <laughs> uh, that's uh, Echo Form, Echo which four. is a six plus. All right, six plus on a D12. When I'm at a plus five, or yeah, plus five. Um, my D12 is here. We are good. That very much does it. So we Echo Form, and I have to make it within nine inches from your totem. Okay. What does nine inches look like? Something like that. Um. Does this make sense? Oh, how about this? How about this? Will this fit? It won't. Nope. Hmm. Right there. All right, here you go. I got one uh, more. So I got my two here. Um. My stalkers have fury, right? Yep. I take another attack on your stalker. Oh, I definitely should have moved out. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, I got a 12 plus a 2. I got 14. You got a, is that a 6? Six? 6 yeah. plus, plus a 4. 10. 10. Okay, that hits. And my damage is a d6. This is where I made a big mistake. This okay. is important. Yes. It's a 3. Oh, oh, man. Oh, okay, survived. thank God. Okay. All right. And then you go. I'm done. Nope, I got nothing done. left. All right. I'm going to take a disengage and a walk for 9. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. And I'm going to walk right. Here. Yeah. All right. Show me another nine inch movement card. I'm just going to scare both of them off the board. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. That at least. Would be, that I would mean, be if you want to know what my echo form was what for, it was, to, it was to block this yeah, off. Yeah, okay. I didn't know that, but that would have been uh, brutal. I might not have been able to reach nine inches, though. It might have been, it would have been I could have moved this corruptor, though. That's true. Yeah. Ah, okay. All right. So that was Stop round Stop ruining my fun, JP. I already <laughs> rolled badly. <laughs> All right. All right, going into round four. Still 2-0. I have two people left, though. We're so in round four now, so are we? Uh, yeah. We start at the end of round four. At the end of round like four, yeah. Out. yeah. Yeah. Phase out. Every, all so, the demons get recalled back into whatever realm yeah, they're yeah. from, or not demons, but whatever they are. Well, if you want to get into lore. Yes. Because you love lore. I don't mind lore. Yeah. The totem acts as like a gateway, so the Eternals and all the powers in space can't get into the Echo, only the Idols can, right? Okay. So you like send your totem in, and then the totem kind of opens a gateway for the Idols to get in. Okay. So the phase-out thing is just like, you know, eventually they can only maintain that focus in there so long to keep okay. them in the Idols. Yeah. Uh, love love it. It. All right, love it. let's roll. So what do we got? We got a no movement, three extra tokens, and a plus one. One, two, th three, so I get six of these. Is that right? But, uh, yes. Um, and then I get five. No, I have four. I get seven of these. Seven. Three. Um, so if I reap the last person, but it also takes my last model off the table, what happens? You lose. You would, you would. Okay. In a really weird way, you would lose. Okay. 
Ah, uh, so five for me. And like thematically, the the idea there is that like now that you have no gateway or idols in the echo, I'm just free to run around and collect as many lo more lost as I can find off this board, right? Right. right. All right, 12 is my highest number. Uh, I got a 17. Now we need to blow some things up. By the way, I don't know if this needed to be stated, but if you guys have any questions about Isles of Torment, now is the time to ask. We've got both of the developers here right now, so let us know. We'll do a little, maybe like a little Q&A session at the end, sure. a little bit of a review, uh, also time for that, but at any point, we can also ask questions. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's just see here. Stay away from my idols, please. I mean, that's not what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to attempt collapse here. I can't focus it. Uh, What's so, your next one? Uh, 14. Oh, you could if you want. My next one's 12. No, no, no. I need consecutive. Whether or not. There's, you have the next two consecutive. Oh, I have the next yeah. two that I can use. Yeah. Okay, so you don't have. I have yeah, 12. okay. Yeah. Uh, so I will focus this and. Focus. 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 <laughs> Uh, I get a plus five. So I'm looking for a three. And that's a one. <laughs> your uh, your casting rolls have been uh, pretty pretty sad. Not finding them threes. Uh, uh, and then what did you have? I got thirteen. Twelve. Twelve. Can you double focus? No. No. Okay. Um. That's too much focus. Yeah. I mean, like really, I. Let's just. You moved nine inches, so to get away from me. I so did. let's just assume that I'm moving the same nine inches. How do you do that? Do you take a disengage action? Wait, uh, was there? Wasn't there engaged with anybody. No. It, How do you move nine inches then? Oh, the, that model can move nine inches. Oh. The speed on this uh, on that model is a nine inches. Stock oh. Is nine. Yeah. yeah. Nine. So technically, you could have disengaged your three inches and then made a nine-inch move, which you may not have realized. I, uh, I, I don't didn't know if realize you, that, but I don't think I would have. But done I think it. you probably placed it by the loss, right. regardless. My right? plan is to scare it off the edge. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, getting around behind it wouldn't have made it matter. But okay. yeah, that's nice. That's a nine-inch move. Um, uh, so I will move okay. in and I will attack again. This lurker on lurker. Lurker on lurker. Stalker on stalker. Or stalker on stalker. <laughs> binder on binder. <laughs> Plus four for me. That's a 16. bigger number. Yeah. One bigger. Nineteen twenty twenty one. And I got a D6. That's a five. Yeah, so right. you got a D6 as, to roll as D4, well. Four, right? For a no, no, D6. Oh, it's a stalker. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey! Oh. You survive another day. Oh my gosh. Okay. Staying in it. I'm staying in it. And that was my 13. Um, so now I don't have anything till six. So. Oh shit, really? Stop okay. That I, uh, this one? Yeah. No, the lurker, so that it doesn't try to shoot you. That is definitely a good option. I could all. I'm thinking about also stunning the Reaper, but that's not how he's trying to win the game right now. Nope. He's trying to kill my dudes. Stunning is not a terrible idea. I was also thinking of cataclysming this, but I don't have any like idols to cast spells from or whatever the big AOE thing was. Yeah, because basically you can only do that through your totem, which now restricts your reach on all those eternal powers. Yeah. Okay, so then I, I will target this terrain to do a collapse. I will use my 10 and my 12. Sorry, it's time to pick up my daughter from school. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a long drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a little late. <laughs> I'm going to use 10, 12, so I focus. I'm at a plus one, so a net plus five. Trying to get an eight. Don't need a three on a D12. All right. We're good. good. It goes off. It is uh, an internal power, so I'm rolling a D20 at a plus five. 21. 21, 21. and I am a lurker, so I got a plus four on this. <sighs> Will not suffice. D6 damage for a four. Oh, I can so do you it. you can't on I, a four, right? Yeah, on a four, I'm good. Oh, zapped! Bazinga. All right. Very nice. Um, if I attack there, that gives him the opportunity to hit me back. But I kind of feel like I kind of need to. Oh, That's I could. Fury, so you could always attack again. That is so true. Okay. There was an empower ability, wasn't there? Yep. You might not oh, be in range. You're right. Yeah. The totem thing is really. I um, keep forgetting about that. All right. So these aren't 
uh, super useful at the moment. Uh, am I within nine inches? If I stun his totem, can I, does that mean he can't like, do anything or he can't be used as a totem? be able to take the reap action. Uh, you're right. I mean, I mean this guy. I'm not oh, in, the corruptor. Yeah. I'm not in range anyways. I'm a little bit out of nine. Um, if you stun one of my beacons, I can still cast Eternal Powers okay, through yes. them if that's what you get. Yeah. So there's no kind of like silence mechanic. No. Okay. 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 Not yet. Not yet. Maybe maybe one of the new factions might have a silence. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Who knows? Um, the quiet. The quiet. I don't know if you guys ever uh, uh, run into this, but it's like whenever someone plays your game, they're, they're always gonna, and, and they know you're like actively developing it, they're gonna wanna suggest things to yeah. you, but you know exactly how you want your game to be, and so like, and they don't know yeah. that, and so they might be giving you a legitimately good recommendation, but it doesn't fit at all. I mean, like, game. and that's what we were experiencing during playtesting, yeah. which is like, yeah. there was like a, a bunch of things that were good ideas in a vacuum, but that's not what we were going for. Right. And then there was just like some brilliant, like, like echo. Echo form or echo fade? Echo fade. How, so we had echo form, right? Where it came into, you bring train into existence, but we didn't write in echo fade, which is the reversal. That was a play tester that was like, it'd be cool if we could take it. I was like, yeah, perfect, great. And the rebuff. And rebuff of that the, yeah. Play tester recommendation. Okay. Um, I'm going to risk it and try to swipe at this guy. He's trying to kill me. Um, and this is a, don't tell me, don't tell me, a stalker. Yep. All yeah, right. Stalker. D12. All right. Here we go. I'm at a plus two. Is that 17? Yeah. yeah. You, you get it. Ooh, I do it. All right. And this is a D6, D6 versus on D6. D6. Who can roll higher? Not oh. me. Uh, close. All right. I have three and two. Okay. I am going to. Uh, where are you? Can anybody guess what I'm going to do? Mike says, I love how ridiculously tall the terrain is on the board. It's a cool vibe to have a relatively small board with ultra tall terrain bits. Yeah, it's because I'm, I'm a tall boy. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. How tall are you? 6'2". Uh, 6'2", two. Six two, okay, yeah. We're the same height, aren't we? I'm 6'5", yeah. So you live taller than me. You have hair. Yeah, I don't have hair. Yeah, I got some volume. <laughs> you got some volume. Yeah, Scott claims I, to be 6'3". I'm 6'3 in boots. What do you think I am? You think I'm taller than I am? No, I don't know. You're like five foot four. Yeah, Everybody right. thinks all YouTubers are like five foot four. I know. Everyone's some... like, you're so much taller than I but, thought. But then I'm it like, turns what? out that every hobby YouTuber is like <laughs> over six feet tall yeah, for some reason. Emil is like Not Vince. six three. Emil is, he's like, no, he's like six seven or something yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Emil's legitimately tall. Emil's huge. Uh, fucking uh, Midwinter is huge. Eric's Eric tall. is huge. Yeah, they're all tall. Come see us at Adepticon where we see who's the tallest boy. <laughs> yeah, uh, Vince is the only one that's not tall. tall. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're small. Oh, I, I think you're four inches tall. <laughs> it's just because we're always under a desk. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. You just look like a gremlin. Uh, okay. What are you going to do? What are you I gonna do? am going to try to Cataclysm, of course. Okay. And I'm going to focus it so that it hopefully happens. That's kind of a what range. What are you talking about? You're like six foot six. In a way, right? Because you could pick, pick a point within three inches and hit someone within three yep. of that, yeah, right? Okay. So yep. a 12 inch range. But again, limited to where your beacon is. That's yeah, true. which I, all my beacons are right here, and I'm going to be going towards this. All right. Let's firstly see if I can do it. What am I looking for? Uh, I have five. I'm looking for four. That's, That's the wrong bad. dice. I'm like, <laughs> I can't roll that high. Yeah, like, how did I get a 13? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> you did it a 40 or 3. It feels so bad. <laughs> feels bad, man. Feels bad. Feels bad. That's all right. That's okay. Uh, what did you say you have? I have a three and a two. Okay, so I have a four. Um, uh, then I will... Fury... I'll take another attack there. Okay, I love this. This is ongoing combat we have. Seven, what was it? I think we're tied. We're, no, 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 we're not. You have a better defense than I have in uh, yeah, 10. 10, and I have a seven, eight, nine, right? Oh, so it's, yeah, it's a two and a four, okay. Yeah, yeah like we're, we're the same unit and they defend better than the attack. Okay, was that your four? That was my four, yeah, and now I have a one. And can you attack even more than twice with Fury? No. no. Okay, so that's that's locked up over there. Yeah, that's out of commission. Right. Uh, just just for the cool stunning mechanic, I will try to stun with my ranged attack uh, on his Reaper from my Corruptor. Two candles? No, uh, uh, four, lurker. four. Lurker. Lurker. All right. So I have a combat uh, additive of three. Going for it. Got a thirteen. And I'm a fifteen. I don't know what's what's the term Co uh, uh, modifier. Modifier. Like modifier. Additive. It makes me think of like nutrients. You're added in. <laughs> Lots of potassium. In this <laughs> so I had a ten. Th this spell is all high fructose corn yeah. syrup. I got a thirteen. What'd you get? I got a fifteen. Okay, so you're good. And then I will just uh, I'll just move further and further away. Smart. Yeah, that's 
Get off the tail, motherfucker. Okay. Um, the thing to do. And I that was my three, and then for my two, I'm gonna swipe. We're just gonna we're just gonna keep hitting each other. I love this. Um, all right. You don't have fury. Uh, that's a, that's a, a unique yeah. thing yeah. to you. That's my all my models yeah. are activated oh. now, so the round ends, right? Or do you have a model that's not activated? I have two models that are not oh, activated. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So what should I do with my two? I can't really do anything because nothing's in range of my idol or my sorry my my uh, totem, um, and they can't go again. So I think this part is a wash. Then that might be uh, the only. The one thing you can try to do is try to waste an eternal power, like try to sure. take it out of commission. Think, what might I do, and just try to get it off, even if it doesn't do anything for you. Um, uh, I guess the one with the three-inch AOE, because it's really a twelve-inch range, and you can move toward me. Uh, the cu- uh, the one I just tried, right? Yeah, you didn't get it uh, off, right? Cataclysm. Cataclysm. I'll try for it. I need something high. Uh, it's a nine. You would actually have range to hit. Oh, you might be able to oh, hit this guy. Oh. Yeah. Nine inches actually, face to base. Yeah, twelve inch range, uh, effectively. Yeah. There you go. So I, I actually it's not not just. It's not a waste. To steal it yeah. from no. you. All right, so I need a D. Uh, I need a. D- I need a twelve. You need no. a D twelve, and you are looking for a nine. You have a plus one. Let me give her eight. Whoa! <laughs> what up? What up? There you go. <laughs> All right. So now you can resolve that attack. All right, D eight damage. But first, we got the same hits. All right, twelve. And that's to my 13, but I have 14, 15, and then plus something right, else. You're good, you're good. Goobertown Hobbies in the chat. What up, Goobs? <sighs> Goobertown. Jeremy. I'm coming was, for you. He was talking about you. I was talking so much at smash lunch. at lunch. <laughs> I cannot wait to. Can't, we can't repeat that on the. <laughs> here to here. torment you. <laughs> uh, all right, that was my go. That was my last thing. Okay, so I can't do that thing, but what I can try to do is echo form, which is what I'm going to try to do. Uh, and I, I'm going to use that. Looking for a five on this dice. You don't want to move your model first? Oh, oh do I? Can. Do I have to? I mean, I probably do have to. Yeah. If you want to get it yeah. in front, yeah. Okay, hold yeah. on. I'm going to. Why do you have left? One. Well, then he I can't do this now. Wait, you can't move and cast a spell? You won't let me cheat. <laughs> I have one token to activate a model to oh, move it. Yeah, it, okay, yeah. All right. I well. totally could have gotten away with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always forget that like using an eternal power is separate from taking an action with a model. It's yeah. like it doesn't like the model doesn't activate to do it, it just goes through them. Yeah, yeah. Um, it must be one person watching <laughs> that has read the rules yeah. and would catch that. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't me. Malev's here too. What up, Malev? Dude, I fucking love that Goober Town emo. Where the hell do I get that? Do I need to stop the Goobs channel for that? Evan, can you see whose whose emo that is? Yep. You have to subscribe to Goober Town well, Hobby's channel. Down already. Oh, can you, can you, <laughs> you spend, know every. Uh, can you spend my Prime sub I on his channel yeah. and then spam that in the chat and be, like, uh, endlessly? Yeah. One second. Don't. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Brent, it's worth it for that email, brother. <laughs> Look at that fucking email. I love that. Oh, man. <laughs> when you get the Casey emote, too? Goddamn. Nothing's looking great here, actually, for my last thing, because JP won't let me cheat. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually me and JP versus you right now. That's what it is. So, but we didn't... We didn't get Cataclysm off, so that's really all I can try to do again. And I can do have enough reach to do this, JP. Uh, but Cataclysm did go off. Yeah, I used the ability. I thought you did Collapse. Nope. There's your, there's I, your collection of emotes, Scott. What was that? You got all of these great emotes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. What we didn't do was a cosmic blast. I can't move and do that. This is not working for me now. Find a loss. You could move and set up for next turn in case you draw a higher initiative token than me because you have more dudes. Yeah. Uh, one of the lost. Because then I, I can't. He's, he's all. I, he's I already all have a bad loss. It's all out of order. Oh, you can't have more than one bind. Would, yeah, but it would remove that bound, but at least stop another one from running off the board. Okay. Relax. That's true. Now. That lost is. Yeah, but then this loss might run right off the board that way. Yeah, but you're no longer trying to get more lost than him. Yeah, so why do I want to bind the lost? So it doesn't run off, so it doesn't run off the board. board. Well, this one's going to run yeah. inward, you know? 
Well, is this a totem? He, uh, sorry, this one is bound to this model. It will move towards this model, yeah, no yeah, matter yeah. what I do. Yeah, yeah. So what I will do is I will move my six inches with my corruptor. <laughs> I want everyone to go sub to Goobs right now and just start spamming Goobs emotes in chat. <laughs> what is that one? Who is that person? What's the Goobs headset? horrified. That's oh horrified my Goobs? Oh my gosh. There's so many Goober towns. Oh, I love it. Uh, oh, I mean, okay, yeah, I will try to bind that like wasp over there. Beyond. Rude. And I'm looking for a four to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't. So it's all irrelevant. <laughs> okay. Uh, that ends the turn. So now we see if you win or not. Because this the game could just end right now. Okay. Uh, this is a phase out. Starts. Okay. So at the end of the fourth round, you roll a d8. On a three or higher, you play a fifth round. Okay. On a three or higher. On an eight. You play a fifth okay. round. We're doing it. All right, show me the money. Any tokens on this board here? Now, I'm I'm pretty sure that if we have any range of lost movement, you're gonna win instantly. Well, because this, oh, oh this, no, this, there's this one. No, I actually forgot about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is problematic. You can just keep that bound for yeah. the rest of the game and just hunt me down. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. They're going to move six inches anyway. So uh, this model is going to move towards first, because it's bound, towards this thing, which is just going to go okay. like that. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, we got, well we're got. we supposed to draw our tokens first. We can do whatever we want. That one will go off the board, though. It won't? It will. Yeah, OK. So yeah, run that one off the board. And I'm sure that one will also, or be very close to it. That's off. It's off. So I am drawing. Five. And I am drawing four. Alright. Show me that 20. Nope. I, I'll show it here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Alright, 1613. Alright. What's he gonna do? I have 20? a 20. Um you got options. Now, I just have to take care of that last soul. Maybe it's running with the lurker and just reap it. And then oh, <laughs> and you know what's really, you, you know what's great about this turn? What's that? Is that plus three. Uh, so, <laughs> I will um, probably have to move. Oh no, I don't want to, I can't move in. Oh my god, the goob spam, I freaking love it. Goobs, and it's only for me and Miniac. <laughs> I should just keep this card out, right? Collapse or cataclysm? Cataclysm and also collapse. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, nine inches. This is where he does you any place. He just spams cataclysm. Uh, well, first he does take out my reaper and corruptor first, kind of like what he did to you. For sure, and yeah. And then it makes it this kind of game, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's I often like end up playing the scorn and just yeah. like doing that and playing into that, right? Yeah. The so plus one of the damage kind of definitely makes them like an aggressive army. Yeah. But there's so, like some of the other factions, like if you're playing uh, the Vein, for example, they all have the remain ability. So it really kind of changes the dynamic where they can and all you can be reap reaping with and all stay your stuff. on the board. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, what is my. Um, where's my D12? I lost right it. Oh, it's there. Hanging out with Eminem, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yellow, purple pills, right? Is that the right. No one knows what I'm talking about. I did not hear the reference. I did not I hear thought. anything, so I'm oh, just smiling. I sang it. I think I quoted a D12 song, but I could be wrong. That's from the HMB days. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna try Cataclysm. It's a nine. I got a plus three there. Looking for a six. That's a seven. <laughs> this is a seven. It's a seven is a really small. Yeah, tail. It's a seven. Yeah, yeah. It's a seven in the cold. <laughs> it, was, it, it was in the pool. Oh my god, dude. That's hilarious. Yeah, I don't have anything until a nine. All right, I'm going to Cataclysm. Uh, I'm going to uh, focus as well. Um, because we established that that was in range. Yeah, That's you very can nice. absolutely do that. So we'll do that. Uh, so we're at a plus four, a plus three, a plus seven. So I need a two. Ooh. I need a two. Didn't go off. Uh, what pool. can you do? What can you do? <laughs> no cataclysm today, boys. <laughs> uh, what do you got now? I have uh, six four. Remember that time? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. You've used this spell like eighteen times. But remember that time that like 
Uh, you focused it. It didn't go off. But I'm gonna focus it now. Show me that one. Yeah. Sure. So what do I need? What, a three? Is that what we you just? You need a two up. I need a two. Yeah. I can do this. I can. <laughs> I believe I can, in you. I can roll at least a two. <laughs> I believe in you. There it is. is. Now is it going to do anything? Let's see. Uh, we're going to go here. Go over here. Yeah. Are you uh, from here? Okay. From yeah. this guy. Oh, he's an also an idol. Beacon. He's a beacon. Yeah. So he's a beacon. A, there a are three beacons. Yeah. And I, I just happen to have all three of my beacons. Wonderful. Okay. Um. So attack, attack, attack. Or the hollow, your slayers are also beacons because you have the vessel ability. I mean, your slayers but they're are dead, dead, but yeah, 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 yeah. You're just for you know, and that's a crit. Okay, I won't even roll. So, uh, that is a d8. I get to roll it twice. I get a d4, I believe. Don't bother. Six, yes. okay, four. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. I so need to roll a second time. On a six, yeah, he's he's, uh, he's okay. Best. So, we are one step closer. Um, and then I have a five. Would you say you have uh, a six? Six, you're good. So you. Um. Hmm. I kick ass for the Lord. Well, disengaging and running means that you can't hit me with that guy uh, if I move kind of directly away from you. But that means that I'm moving kind of that way, that way, that way is toward other people that haven't activated yet, so it doesn't really work out because you could just uh, blast me with something else. Um, sadly, this is not close enough to do the small nuke uh, not the AOE one. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, my only recourse here is to swing. Do you have a you have something in between six and four? I have a five. Okay, so you do. All right. Um, oh. I can't make the terrain collapse. Why well, does not even close up anyways? All right, we'll swing over here. That's not complicated. Yeah. Plus two to your plus four. That's a seven or a one. I can't tell. That's a seven. Doesn't matter. You definitely nine. Win. Right. That was my go. I have a four. Um, I liked what you were doing there. <laughs> so let's go the other way. I'm hoping for a backlash right here. Uh, what about five, six, Backlashable. seven? Backlashable. You got one. You got one. Yep. All right. That's definitely. So I don't need to roll the hit. That was nope. like that was the to hit thing. Well, that was like you successfully defended. Yep. Now you get to hit back. So now we're new attack roll. Okay. Okay. You're the attacker. Not great. <laughs> Not Be great. Better. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, well, that was my five. I have a two. Right. Um, I don't think I can do anything. I did the cataclysm. You already did it, so it went off. Yeah. Um, could just make more terrain, but there's, an, I mean, it's not. You you could it. use uh, collapse if you think he's gonna use it, even though it, like it's not a piece of terrain that you could reach or, or the, the, that has enemies in it. Mm. Like just cast it on that piece. Yeah, because he has nothing to lose because he has more models. Because I might do. do, I might sacrifice yeah. a model. With, Why not? We'll do I mean, it. JP was right. That's what I was looking for. Ah, he knows. He's played you too many times. Well, out of the boxes, not count. All right, here we go. I'm at a plus three for the round, which is a seven, which is not enough. Not enough. It needs, not a, needs a, an eight for collapse. Wait, is that the one I'm looking at? Collapse? Yep. Yeah, yeah, so you need an AI. Right, Four, five, six, seven. Does yeah. not work. All right, that was my last uh, token. So I will attempt the same thing. Boop, boop. That's an 11. So it does go off. Um, this piece of terrain, yep. okay. obviously. Uh, now, uh, I need to resolve an attack, and that's against you and against me. Watch him kill his model, but not yours. <laughs> it's very, very possible. Do we get a plus two for being obscured? Yes, do. Okay. both of us do. Right. So I'm going to swing it. I'll, we'll do yours first. Okay, you're at a plus five, I'm at a plus six. 16. Uh, so I'm good. good. I'm at a 19. Well, that's a. This now here's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're hitting yourself, right? I'm hitting myself. Okay. Well, so same, same. So 16. 16. And I'm defending, and I'm, it's plus six, right? Yes, yes. So get higher than. Eight. Oh, that's not, that's not enough. That's not, yeah. Good job. <laughs> The rubble crashes. Oh, uh, so rubble crashes, uh, but I, I still have to roll the. I don't know if I'm dead yet. Yes. So D6 damage. It's a D6 damage. So it's a two versus my. I have a D6 to defend. Yeah. Roll a one. Roll a one. Oh! Yes! I told you! <laughs> he just walks off! <laughs> this table doesn't flip easy, does it? Pro plays. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty light. It's like bamboo. Yeah, it is lighter, yeah. Please don't. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, that was hilarious. How not to play. Awesome. <laughs> that is hilarious. That was awesome. I'm also out of tokens now, which I, I think you well. are. Yes. So that's the end of that turn. She's like, turns are going quick now. They're going quick, uh, yeah. So before we Five do anything, up. yeah, roll your, roll the D. Is the reason that I'm rolling it? Is that, is that? Yeah, anyone can roll it. Okay, so. I'm just letting you roll it. On a five, on a, on a which, which die? A D8. A D8. Okay. Five up, there's a sixth round. Nope. Nope. You win. Oh, game over. All right. Game. GG. I was a torment. That was probably one of the faster games that we've played uh, ever on a stream. So a lot of people say that you can play in an hour and a half. Like notorious. You actually can play this game in an hour and a half. Yeah, it felt that way. Um, so that I mean, everyone kind of lies about that. And in this case, it was it was pretty straightforward. And, I mean, yeah. it was two hours and forty six minutes. So. Okay, so that well, it felt like, like an hour and a half. It, so felt, it, it did feel not not bad. We were also um, talking about movies. So. We're, we were, yes. Well, but also explaining the game. So now, like, you yeah. removed learning from the equation, and that was, uh, we played five rounds. Yeah. We, you, the max round you can play is six. Okay. So this game only could have went one more round, and you can see how quick that round would be. Yes. So this is the longest the game can actually run. Yeah. Obviously, it depends how much time you waffle. Sure, yeah. And also, if he's looking at the live time on stream, we were also live before we even started playing the game. We, like, introed it. So yeah, I, I give ourselves a buffer of 10 minutes on that revised number, but yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You remember the start where I said you could win a game with one model on the board? Yeah. You won yeah. a game I with did. one it model literally, on the board. It literally happened, yeah. And it, it could have gone a totally different way if my guy died and your guy didn't but, die. Yeah, and also, <laughs> like, you took out my two aggressors, like, right away. Yes. Which kind of, like incentivized me to not try to table you. Yeah. And for a while, I wasn't. Yeah. Um, but then at a certain point, that's what I had to do. Yeah. So it yeah. reminds me of our last game where you tried to reap twice at the start and kept failing. So yeah. then you're like, screw it, I'm just going to kill the guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's Thanks cool. to Travel Cedric for the sub five minutes ago, by the oh, way. Thank I don't you, know if we called it out. Last note, if you have any questions, y'all, um, but let's talk, let's talk about the game here. So I'm curious, in your uh, game development process, did you do any uh, blind testing? Did you like give the like a packet of, and so and how did that work out? Did you ask them to like record themselves? How did you get feedback? From so blind, we well, first testers? the big thing was finding a playtest group, and okay. we were fortunate that uh, there is a group of dudes in Winnipeg, like old gaming dudes, uh, that they they play so many games all the time. Okay. Like these are grognard gamers who like, they're really into it. Okay. Um, like they have like multiple weekly games that go on. And we reached out to them and asked them to play test because one, they have a ton of familiarity with all sorts of different games and they will actively play things a lot. So, you know, if, if, if we could get it to a point where like it was good for them, then it should be good for anyone. And they yeah. play tested for they, they, I mean, they've been playtesting for other games for years. Like, like one of the members, uh, like knows some of the designers from Warhammer or, or like, like yeah, forty k and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, the good thing about this group is that they were sort of in the same phase uh, in life in terms of the type of game that they were looking for. So they understood what we were trying to make. Yeah. In terms of a game that was just sort of balanced, no list building, just plays like a almost like a pseudo board game or a strategy game, like chess kind of. So thing. So they didn't give us too much like feedback that was like out of what we were trying okay. to do. They yeah. understood our goal and tried to help us get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they basically, uh, once they had the, they had like an early draft set of rules and they played it as one of their regular games within their rotation and mm -hmm. played basically an ongoing like couple games of it over time. Uh, and then we had some big meetings where we met up and we talked and we discussed stuff and then we would revise the rules. And then they got like a second draft of the rules and they did the same thing and played some more. Mm. Uh, and basically until like until the very last moment when we hit like approve like draft for print, there was an opportunity for playtesting input to like alter things. And when do you decide? When are you like, yep, this is my revision one. We're gonna ship this stuff. When when do you say it's not? Well, when did we decide? It was sort of an organic process okay. where I think it got to a point where uh, we were trying to figure out every possible scenario and just making sure that we were closing off any loose ends. Like, if I do this power, what happens if, and you know, so at the last minute you're saying, okay, maybe this model should have the beacon ability because there isn't enough beacons on the board and stuff like that. And I just remember there was a point where, you know, we were, when we were playing games, they were just sort of rolling exactly the way we wanted them to. Okay. And, uh, um, and, and I think know, there was also a point where we just, you know, realize and acknowledge that, like any art, it could never be done. Like you could revise rules, 
into eternity. So yes. we certainly, at a certain point, had to say, like, you know what? Any more changes are not going to make it quantifiably mm -hmm. better or worse while still being the same game. Because we could rewrite this game into a totally new game over totally. time. So yeah. you just kind of like a self edition someday. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, thankfully, like, there hasn't been a ton of time for people to be playing this game regularly, but people have started playing it. And like we haven't discovered a lot of holes that we missed. Um, I think we recently, in our last game, discovered, discovered one language flub on one of these eternal powers, which we'll deal with in the future. Oh, yeah. But, have like, that, right? but it's like, it's, it's literally just because it doesn't say until the end of turn. Okay. Which is like, use your judgment. Like, that's what we meant. We just sure. forgot to put that on the card. Yeah. But yeah, it's just... Question from Mike Genie. Uh, one is 145 bucks US all in, and two, will there be physical copies at Adepticon? Uh, kind of. Kind yeah, of. I mean, there's a, a, a gaming store in Chicago called Games Plus okay. um, that have a vendor booth there, and, and we've given them some stock. Yeah. But we didn't we actually get import a any into the States to sell sort of out of a backpack. Okay. But they'll have copies on hand. Okay. I mean, I. Uh, like technically, I brought in a couple copies that are for promo for legal reasons. That you, if you want to come up to us and like buy, we actually can. Okay, sure. Um, but go to ga the Games Plus booth first because they are actually carrying it in a retail capacity. And they are. Um, how, sorry, are they at the show or are the people meant to go to the game store itself? No, no, they have a booth. They have a, booth. They have a oh, vendor okay. booth there. And, okay. I, and I mean, like, should they not sell them out? It will be stocked at their store. They they will restock. I think actually, all we're talking about the promo ones that we're bringing to maybe give to someone who might need it. They might just take that as store stock. So they will stock it in Chicago moving forward. And what else would you need beyond the 145 bucks for so, the well, for, First of all, the 145 dollar set that's on our website includes this game mat and this game mat. No. Nope. Or no, so if I'm wrong, that's the two part. So the 145 includes, yeah, this. Uh, well, that's the, in US. Sorry, I'm still thinking yeah. million dollars. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, the one, we, we, 145 we have to, does include the game mat. Yeah, yeah. so that's the right mat, the, the bundle with a mat, which was a Kickstarter exclusive. And there are, if I recall correctly, literally five of these mats left. So the next five people to order it online. That's it. That's all. Okay. Uh, we probably will reprint a game mat or alter it in, uh, in some time, but not in the immediate future. So if you want the game mat, it's like there's a couple left, and they won't be at Adepticon. Okay. They're those five. Those are only through us. Um, however, the the other set, like which is like the book, the game pieces set, which has the lost models and these tokens, and then the deck, that you you'll be able to buy from, uh, game from plus. from yeah from them or from our website. And in terms of what else do you need? Yeah. Um, you you need your player models, right? So the lost these models we have as plastic on sprue that come as a set. Same with the the initiative tokens. These are only available as STLs. So you can buy these on my mini factory, print the official models, or you can use whatever models you want. Kit bash, create these fancy little candles. Come in the game pieces set. So if you kit bash two factions and have that game piece of set, you can mark them as what they are. Nice. Uh, you can also just like get the STL and 3D print those candles, make your own candles, whatever. It's so cool, actually. That's uh, such, a, such a great way to like not have to like do colored base rims or encourage conversion or other models while also still indicating to your opponent when clearly they are. I really like that idea, even though it's so simple. And then also like nice. if you get if you're 3D printing uh, and you have those candles, that's kind of like a thematic thing throughout the setting, you can also print out hundreds of them and put them all over your terrain. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like yeah. that's kind of, uh, this terrain set doesn't have it, but the playmat obviously does. Uh, and then, yeah, you need some terrain, which uh, this set here, I would call a basic set. Like in the book, there's like a, this is what you need X amount of each base size, like just to get going. And and this is, this is it. This is the bare bones. I think this can get a lot more dense, elevated, and you can do a lot more. But this is about the terrain you need to make to run a standard standard game. And then there's, yeah, uh, some... Keeping some extra in mind for yeah. the internal powers. Mm -hmm. Echo form. Echo form, especially. Uh, someone said, where did the Baphomet model come from on the website under the game tab? Uh, well, all of the models... Uh, wait, Baphomet model... Like, are, are we talking about a piece on of art? It's on the website. The, 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 the piece game? that you made with the 3D printed guy on it. Oh, the, okay. So the piece of terrain that has Baphomet in it, that is an Arch Villain Games model, which that was a failed 3D print that became terrain. Okay. But if you want like that model uh, and the rest of it, because I said that piece in the picture doesn't use all of it, yeah, it's from Arch Villain Games. Okay. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Um, 
I had another question, and I kind of forgot it. It's about game design, because I'm kind of into that at the moment as well. And so I kind of wanted to pick your brain about the process. But I can't remember it right now. Um, is there anything else the viewers should know about before we sign off? Well, just that we're not uh, done with the product. OK, you know? that is like, exactly the question yeah, I wanted okay. to ask. So, so yeah. game development is not just a, I'm putting this thing out and then it's done. There oh. are like you know yeah. seasons that come out, revisions. So, is there a plan for that? Yes. For uh, yes. The immediate direct short-term plan is to help um, nurture and facilitate a community of players of this game. Essentially, like people who back the Kickstarter or are buying it now, we want to just like, like actually make this a game they can play. And so if you are out there and you are part of a club, a game store, run a convention, and you want to run some games, reach out to us and we will give you whatever tools we can to make ru like running this game in your community easier. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're a small, well, it's us, right? Like, so we can't like send tons of stuff everywhere, but uh, we'd love to help people demo this game and play this game. And it's our dream to like, at least in some places in the world, have Idols of Torment night once a month, right? So that that's the short-term goal. And then the next goal is Kickstarter part two, which is taking this, which we like really stretched our means and abilities for publication to do what we did. But this game would be a lot better if it wasn't complicated in the sense of, yeah, you can get these in plastic, but these are only 3D printed. So we're right now talking with the manufacturer that did these about taking two factions, putting them in plastic, making some plastic terrain, putting everything in a starter box, like a typical war game starter box with two factions. And that's what we want to do next. And then after that, we also have a, what is the next game that's, I don't want to say the reskin of this game, but the next game in the, in the universe, like what happens in the lore and What's that game look like? So there will be a completely new version of a game in the future that exists in this wider world. I don't know how much we want to say about that. Okay. So, but it's Good. not going to be the same game. It's not going to be version two of Alice Torment. No, it's going to be what happens after this. Because there's a story here. Like, like, like heaven and hell were created. Heaven and hell collapsed. These things are going into the echo to get these out. Well, what happens? Like, Eventually, yeah. You know. Like, I, I, when I say like a second game in the universe, I mean in the same sense of like. 40k and Age of Sigmar are in the same universe some way in a wider scope. Like, like 40k and Necromunda. Are like, a, yeah, like, exactly. Same, same world, yeah. yeah, universe. Okay, someone asked uh, a question. Um, where do y'all take game feedback? Out of Discord? Uh, there is an Idols of Torment Discord, which uh, I don't know how to easily like send a link to at the moment. There's a link on the website, I believe, that you can go and join. It's open to anyone. And yeah. Uh, if you have, if you played the game and you have feedback, we'd love to absolutely to hear it. So, yeah. okay, um, how often do you guys plan on releasing revisions for the game? Is it a six month thing? Is it a no. yearly thing? Is it I not mean, often? The, the style of game, because it's not like intended for like a competitive meta, mm -hmm. we honestly believe it doesn't need revisions. Okay, you know, there's a lot of we want it to sort of be one of those things where if you can't figure something out, just use your best judgment because. The, there's enough there to yeah. give people, you know, the opportunity. And if we come across stuff, there might be like a little like online, like yeah. FAQ change. For sure. But yeah. like, uh, like a scenario pack. Or like scenario pack, yes, or yeah. okay. um, okay. expansions, yes. like more eternal powers, more scenario, like that kind of stuff. Yes. But even when we do the box set, the idea is that it's a reprint of this book in the game. And if we can, if we, if we, by the time we get to doing that Kickstarter, if we feel yep, we can put this in that box without drastically changing it, then we succeeded, right? But that's the goal. There'll be a version to play up to four player, I think. Oh yeah, that's the, the other thing. That's the big thing, is a four is player. It's intended as a two player game, but if there's an opportunity to sort of give it uh, a set of rules that you can play with four player, again, it's sort of looking at kind of the board game nights that a lot of people are doing nowadays with four people together. Sort of yeah, this is like really, I think one of the main things when we started was, let's make a game that we can play when everybody can't show up at D&D. That's what it is. Just a pickup game in between other games. Absolutely. And I think you guys have the right idea. Like, because the number one thing I hear about, like, I like to play a lot of games. And so I recommend a lot of games to people. Mm -hmm. And I always hear constantly, like, no one plays that game locally. Yeah. And so if you can empower a game store to host a game night, so or you can empower an individual to here, do that, yeah. that's amazing. The game store is a little harder. But what 
the great thing about this game is that the idea isn't that if you have a group of friends that they all buy Idols of Torment and no, pick their yeah. faction and paint right. them all. Right. The idea is that like Scott buys this game and he prints out and paint. There's only eight factions that each have nine models. You can print and paint and base every model in this game with the same amount of work as like making your army for another game, which means that a buddy comes over and it's like, hey, pick which ones you want to play tonight. Okay, I'll play the, these guys, you play these guys. Yeah. And it's like one person can have this game. Yeah. Or grab models from your collection, slap them Yeah, or slap them on the table, or, or yeah. Have an army. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we really tried very hard to have as many inroads as possible, which to a degree like kind of confuses things at a point, but there are so many different ways you can get into and play this game. Like you can play this game with a PDF. Yeah. That's it. Okay. For the uh, last question for me, for the aspiring game developers out there, what's um, one important takeaway lesson from each of you that you learned in the process of making cool. your first game? JP. Uh, it could be like a mechanics thing. It could be like a, a, a little bit more of a higher level thing. It could be anything. But for me, it's it's uh, it's the long range planning and being able to use like a big hierarchy of information. Like there's a moment where we had a whiteboard up where you're just sketching just the core things, and then you slowly start to circle those things and say these things are locked in, and these things are connected, and this needs to happen because of this. Okay. And once you kind of get like a big picture. Then the rest is Once just filling in the gaps, things right? Lock in, it kind of goes. So put put your effort into that whiteboard moment, as I call it, where you're just trying to make sure that everything kind of makes sense at that picture. Okay. And if you can see that, then you're gonna have a good game. Yeah. Eventually, you're like corralling yeah. all the sheep into an area, and you yeah. might lose a few, but eventually, yeah. you have like your core. And yeah. And then it just like if you they, mentioned this on the podcast. That, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I was talking about. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what about you? Uh, I would say. Uh, Unlike a lot of artistic endeavors where I would give you the opposite advice, I would say uh, don't be too committed to your ideas and stick with them. Like be very comfortable changing things. Like whether that's through your own discussions of like when you're figuring stuff out, if you have something that you think is like really cool and really important, don't move forward with it at the risk, at the like jeopardy of other things. Like say it's okay, you know what? And that idea is cool, but like, let's cut it because it just isn't better for the greater, greater good. Like, just be okay letting go. And feedback is greatly important. Like, as an artist, I don't really care about feedback. I make a piece of art. I like it. Good. Call it a day. Right. This is a game that people have to play. Right. Right. Like, and and so, play testing and feedback is invaluable, yeah. and you should listen to it. Mm. But not too much. <laughs> like you like know which is valuable. Yeah. 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 You have to know what to take and leave. You have to also hear what they're saying, not necessarily like exactly what they're saying. They might mean something other than what they're yeah. saying exactly. But like so. you can't have too much pride in it. You kind of like gotta humble yourself and be like, yeah, I just let's just like let's just listen and. That's a great yeah. point because you weren't creating the game just for the joy of creating it. You, you no. want it to be played and enjoyed worldwide. Exactly. Know, ideally. Yeah. Okay. Well, we originally made the game for us. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then it became something else? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when you put your passion into something, it shows, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, if you guys want to check out Owls of Torment, you can find it in the link that Evan is endlessly spamming in the chat. If you <laughs> are watching the VOD of this, it'll be in the description below. Um, but otherwise, thanks for bringing along this awesome set of pain and terrain and these models for me to get to enjoy and learn the game. I really appreciate it. I'll that. say one quick thing into yes. the chat that I didn't notice. Uh, some people are asking if you don't have a 3D printer. Yes. Uh, one, you can buy the files, find someone to print it. But also, if you on the website, there will be a link to Only Games, which is a th which is our official 3D printing service. So you can buy models that are 3D printed by a company that will be mailed to your door. Yes. Yeah. I mean, More cost effective if you can find a friend, of course. True. They have so. plastic kits, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Otherwise, guys, thanks for hanging out and watching us play Isles of Torment. Thank you to everyone who uh, subbed to my channel while we were playing. I really appreciate the support. Um, I will catch you in a week from now if I'm not inevitably sick from going to Adepticon uh, for next Tuesday's painting stream. But until then, see you guys later. Peace. Thanks. Bye.